Hello and welcome to the Salacast on Sunday the 25th of January 2015. I'm your host Dan Train, joining me today Zachary Burgess Woo. and Robert Kemp. Cheers. <laughs> He's drinking a coffee, that's not anything to say cheers about. <laughs> can you say cheers, can you toast? Like, I don't think you could toast unless it's alcohol, which coffee. is a shame, because what if you're teetotal and you don't drink alcohol? Then how do you... Was... <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so so you can't do it with coffee, but it's a, you're allowed to cheers with with like orange well, juice that's it, been dressed up to look like an alcoholic pot, like an well, alcohol. Yeah, pot. yeah. If you if, but, if you put it in a glass and you know perhaps a martini glass, you're saying you can't cheers a mug. You're decanting J two O into a martini glass. <laughs> put yeah. a key in a martini glass. Because <laughs> well, then it just looks like a cocktail of some kind. And then, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then, and then you can cheers it. So do you think it's the look that's so, important? Or maybe, or maybe coffee works then. Actually, if you make it like creamy enough, then it's can, look like one of those like chocolate teas. Yeah, like a bit like a Bailey's. Yeah. Can you toast with Irish coffee? Is the question. It's got whiskey in it. Mm. Mm. I guess it depends. I, I think it's all about the serving mechanism. You don't really cheers with mugs. Ah, you don't, you don't go clinkies. With your but mugs. you do hit mugs together in a Viking esque kind no, of no, way. Not mugs. They're like tankards. It's basically a mug. <laughs> It's basically an old school mug. It's filled with beer and mead. <laughs> mm. Did you ever have mead at the uh, uh, any kind of Cambridge uh, it's my, beer I fest? have had mead in the past, but it does bad things to me. <laughs> it's like it's pretty tasty, but I've I've not had a hangover like a mead hangover. I don't think like, the <laughs> Do smell, you drink enough the, mead that it, it was the sole cause of your hangover, like well, mead I think so because I, I was pretty good this time and I had quite a lot of various different types of ale and wasn't too bad. Whereas the mead week was pretty bad. And the thing is, is you can't get rid of the smell of mead. Like no one else can smell it. It seems like you, you know you could have showered and do all that stuff, and then it's like everyone said, like, yeah, you smell fine. And I'm like, well, why can I still smell <laughs> mead? Thing. Well, no, because I asked Noam about it, because it was weird. Yeah, so you I, asked the one person who, uh, who would actually have a logical reply. To yeah. Question, it, rather than just, hey, random people, do I smell weird? I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. I just kept smelling mead. Like, you can't, can, can, it wouldn't leave me alone. It do I food. smell fermented honey? <laughs> yeah. Well, honey is evolved, isn't it? There is honey, yeah. It doesn't smell like honey, though, does it? I, I don't think no. I had it. Not really. I mean, you might get... Some of the, some of the notes of honey, but it doesn't really taste like honey. The notes, the notes, yeah, yeah, that is the term with, hop, with hoppy notes. <laughs> you need to incorporate some hoppy notes into your next composition. I think. <laughs> what, what, what do a hoppy notes sound like? I don't know. I think they sound a bit more um, upbeat <laughs> than than, <laughs> than, than meaty notes. Or... Oh, honey, meaty notes. Honey notes. Yeah, meaty notes would be quite fat. Meaty notes would be <laughs> Vikings. Blah. Perhaps they'd be good for a bit of dubstep. Meaty notes. Yeah, meaty notes. Why? They have to. They have to be like a wet fart. <laughs> That's okay. a meaty note. Why? Yeah. Lovely. So when you say okay. this time you've been this... to a beer fest, I have. Some kind? Yes, the uh, Cambridge Winter Ale Festival. 2015. So what makes it a winter it. ale? Just when you drink it when it's cold or no, cold outside? It's, or... just, it's just cold outside. The same ale. It's just, it's all ale. Well, the ale's the same. It's not a winter ale. Though. No, I mean, there, there were a couple fruit. of ales that were like winter specific or something that they had a name that were named after winter. Because but... you get like Christmas name themed ales, which... You know. do, yeah. I reckon it I might be to... that a dark, strong ale or something is more more warming or something. <laughs> We're meant to feel more warming. Do you think, like maybe do you a find pale that... ale is a summer ale. I don't know. Do you think that ale warms you in any way? A whiskey warms you up, doesn't it? I'm not sure why that is. It definitely works. It's, I mean, like, otherwise... It's a just... burning sensation, isn't it? I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the panic that sets in when you realise what you've just put in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, maybe it just raises your, like, um, heart rate or something because you're burning yourself. <laughs> like, shit, fuck, whiskey, oh, God. And, and this warms you. Hmm. But, or, you know, it's just a beer jacket, isn't it? Like, it's alcohol. Alcohol makes you not care about the cold so much. That's true. Perception thing. Is that a vasodilation thing, you know, where the... The, the blood retreats from the extremities and therefore yeah. well yeah, uh, so alcohol does the opposite yeah it? I thought it did the, did the opposite 
you get open, red in the face, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You think that would be bad and make you colder? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But again, maybe you don't just don't sense it, and that's why you go red faced because you're not sensing cold uh, okay. or something. Dangerous. Yeah. The basically. science of beer jackets. Don't 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 booze in the Arctic. <laughs> Do not booze in the Arctic. You see, there was a story that somebody I was, well, I didn't actually read it, but all I read was the headline. But it was enough. A guy in the Arctic managed to find a Tinder date who was like camping like thirty minutes from him. <laughs> <laughs> wow presumably the picture was a picture of a person in a snowy wasteland and, and he yeah. swipes to the left or whichever way you go or is it the right I don't know I don't I use don't it <laughs> if you just swipe the wrong way you'd be really annoyed <laughs> Damn, well, no, one person no, the, one, like a bit... the one other person it could have been like but what if it was the Antarctic the and Antarctic, Antarctic love yeah, that would be like, the worst the furthest the, possible the t- person Maybe the tiniest, coldest violin playing. <laughs> be a nice violin. Made with polar bear gut strings. Oh, okay, the string part. <laughs> I was wondering about the rest of it. <laughs> like, what's this? Well, this the violin case violin. could be made of ice. Oh, okay, okay. Then, the body's made of the ice. Strings, the, the strings, strings are made of penguins or something. <laughs> strings are made of penguins. Okay. No, the penguin could be the bow. You just slide a bit <laughs> down. The... Well, on the, on the soft bet on the belly. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, just the, the, the feathers slightly catch it. It's a very, very unique sounding instrument. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, <laughs> that would be the noise that penguins make. Like. That's the penguin, though, not the ice violin that's being played with the penguin. Oh, it's no, like a compliment. No one knows what an ice violin sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> can you get like acoustic <laughs> instruments because they tend to be made of like wood and brass and stuff or i guess let's say wooden ones what are they called wood wood wooden what's, instruments. What, wooden instruments <laughs> what's the class because wood wind is when you have a reed or whatever and it's wood yeah but they're not right? most of those aren't made of wood yeah anymore what are they made of it's my well, question. Plastic a lot. Yeah, uh, I think okay. clarinets and stuff are mostly like some sort of plastic, and well, flutes count as woodwind, and they're entirely metal. Saxophones are technically. Uh, oh no, that's reed. Flutes don't have a reed. But reeds aren't. Are reeds woodwind yeah. instruments really? Because like I don't know. You're the one that because that, that yeah, I know. <laughs> I was the one who played a flute. I, I just well, yeah, stated flutes this. are definitely yeah, flutes are definitely woodwind, and they're metal. Um, <laughs> right. Like piccolos are also woodwind. Um, but something like the saxophone, I don't know. Does that but, count as woodwind or is a re- are reed instruments a different class? I'm not sure. Can you get space versions of these things that are like carbon fiber and they're still acoustic, not electric or anything? Can you get like exotic material violins and stuff that are made of weird? Probably, I bet mean, people have tried, but maybe there's a resonance. Like, yeah, they probably sound different. It's probably yeah, different. yeah, but maybe you could find something that's better than something that happened to you know from yeah. a top down tree I don't know but they always say that stuff made of wood has like a, a warmth of sound or something that there's something about how yeah. it, it definitely echoes does. inside the inside it yeah but why why can't you yeah. make something maybe it's because they, they're very slightly flexible you know hmm. not totally solid like a carbon fiber thing or a plastic thing would be I guess the brittle nature of it makes it reverberate differently I don't know yeah Instrument it. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think ice is going to work, though, somehow. Why not? Because that's not going to ver- reverb. It's just going to melt, isn't it? It's probably going to oh, sound yeah. mushy. We were playing it in the Arctic, so it's, it's oh, not going to melt. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apart from, the, like, if you're touching it, but presumably you're, like, wearing gloves or some shit, because you don't want to be directly touching fucking ice. <laughs> well, the, presumably the air is... A- like ice temperature or colder, you know. Yeah, because really. Well, you're going to have trouble yeah. under your chin or wherever if you fit a violin, like between your you shoulders. Just put a chin. glove on top of the end of the violin. <laughs> <Chin> <laughs> okay. Glove. Yeah. Just wear wear That's a glove sure. on your chin. Yeah. They already have like a little pad for your violins, don't they? Yeah, normally. For just that purpose. I can violinists have like super strong neck muscles. I don't like, know how much force they actually apply from well, in that position. Yeah. 
or they just permanently have a crick in their neck or something. I don't know. Yeah, that seems possible. <laughs> just, it just, mm, it looks like quite uncomfortable. I mean, what do I know about playing divided? There's no other yeah, instruments that you have to quickly. shove under your neck, are there? It's, it's just like a weird way of, mm. like, sort of holding it. Yeah. yeah. Well, how else would you would you hold a violin? Really? No. That's the question. Uh, yeah, you can't. Guitar, you play it like a guitar. Get a strap. I've seen that. <laughs> so then, like, <laughs> bow upwards and downwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you can you can sort of hold it. Yeah, and be like. <laughs> that would be you can play it sort of cello style with a strap, I suppose. Then what they should do is like make a like instead of having it jammed under your chin for holding it, they should mm. just like have a giant counterweight that stretches past you so you rest it over your shoulder so it basically balances itself in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. no, no need to grab it. Well, you'd have to hold it to stop you pushing it down oh, yeah, as sure, you're playing sure. it. But... <laughs> but there'd be no, no facial scrunching. There's something quite, I don't know, there's something quite expressive about that violinist how they move, even when they're holding it there. I guess. Well, like, that's when they're, they're when they're being fancy about it. Mm. I'm sure it's more possible to play fairly stationary as well. Mm. Was it an electric cello when they um, announced Dragon Age? Yes, <laughs> the classic maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> how was that a classic maneuver? <laughs> pull out, pull out it's, 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 the exact, it's the exact opposite of a classical maneuver. <laughs> no, it's the classic maneuver of having a random live music thing in your video game thing. Which is like, oh, we just have a random person turn up and start playing music and maybe it's be emotional for some reason because he doesn't play music but he can wave a finger around. He plays Wii music. Yeah, exactly. I, think of, is that half, I, don't, I can't think of another occasion where that's actually happened other than the fact that, you know, for Dance Central, Usher turned up. You know? <laughs> what, when they actually have musical acts? Yeah. What happened to all that Wii music stuff? Was that a, it totally passed me by? Was that a game? Well, it, it, it happened and it was rubbish. All yeah. oh, right, okay. That, that was why. That was why. Everyone dis- <laughs> Nintendo disowned it. Clearly, there was like nothing to it. Was the problem, and it was all like MIDI sounds, so it okay. was like it wasn't very effective. I mean, naturally. Wow. MIDI. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nintendo. So that brought us back onto games. So let's talk about news. <laughs> news. What's that? Anyone got any news? News of the couple of weeks. Uh. Microsoft, so Microsoft press news. conference thing. Woo! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so what, what are the main points? Well, number one, for, for actual practicalness, uh, Windows 10 is going to be free upgrade for a whole year for um, oh, wow. anyone from 7, 8, or 8.1. Ooh. Ooh, so, so, uh, so we uh, and the it. meaning of which is if you upgrade within that year, then, you, then it's free forever. So you don't have to. It's not like a time limit or whatever. I think okay, they... they awesome. Some people reported that weirdly, saying like free for a year and then you have to pay. But no, it's, oh, I see. as long as you pay with, as long as you upgrade within a year, then it's free. You, um, you keep your upgraded copy regardless. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. Well, that's that's cool. I might still like completely back up my hard drive before doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. I don't think definitely. I don't think Windows upgrade. I, I I still don't like the idea. I don't know. An upgrade doesn't sound like no. it would fix any of the problems that a new install would. Yeah, it's like no. classic. Like, it like how how much fuckery is going to come with your old install. Basically. Well, it's my classic problem of my fucking Windows 7 partition where it's always goddamn full because there's a bunch of files that Windows just accumulates over time that you can't fucking delete. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and so like, I don't want to bring any of them with it, for God's sake. Well, it's just like, I'd, yeah, I'd still think, like, it's not as bad, it's definitely not as bad as it used to be, but, my, you know, every Windows 7 machine I've been using for any length of time is now slowing down, mm. like, dramatically. My desktop is getting, its boot speed is awful now. Well, your computer um, has other problems, as we often discuss. Always, but <laughs> but yeah, the boot, and I guess by that logic, the boot speed is the least of my worries. But yes. it is super noticeable compared to like a fresh install. Yes. Yeah, I want to do a fresh install because my SSD is just too small. I mean, when I bought it, they were expensive, yeah, much more expensive than they are now. So I got a sixty-four gig one, which is just about okay to put your operating system on and nothing else. Yeah, um, and I guess by that point in time, I'd be thinking about buying a new machine anyway. So perhaps it doesn't matter. Just thinking about doing the upgrade. Well, you just install Windows Seven on there, then immediately upgrade <laughs> on a fresh oh, machine. That's not a bad idea. I can use my copy of. Well, I don't know. Then the licensing weirdness, I suppose. 
I think you could do that. I, I might. Yeah, but do then that. I'd have two machines running the same license. Yeah, but not, the, not at the same time. Like, yeah, I don't know. Assuming yeah. you're getting rid of the old machine, not turning it into a server or some shit. Oh no, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Or taking it apart for parts. That probably would be funny. Well, then again, well, it's it's too it's too noisy and too big to use as a um like a something to stream to. Or you're, like you, could, you know, like to do the Steam home streaming. Or what you could do well. is like put Windows Seven onto your new machine and then upgrade it to ten, and then just install XP on your machine. Because <laughs> I'm sure you still have a code for XP lying around I, somewhere. I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I have my old XP copies. Yeah. You, well, we need to install that with that code into a into a VM so we can muck around with all the Games Factory stuff without all the problems. Yes, but then it wouldn't be virtual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, do, I, I do have an XP VM of my of beef pooter. Yeah. So. Oh, you do. Okay, cool. Yeah, I managed to use um, disk to VHD. I think it is to turn it into a virtual hard disk, and then you have okay. to fuck around with it a bit to get XP to actually boot because it it doesn't get everything correct. Mm-hmm. You have to mess around with it a bit, and then it works, and it works perfectly to the point where I can run uh, my old music environment. And mm. get all the old tracks working on it, which was the main point of me doing that. Are you running then, like VirtualBox or VMware or something? Uh, no, it's whatever's built into a uh, virtual PC, isn't it? Or whatever's built into Windows. So like Hyper V, is it? Or whatever. It's a, yeah, it's a version of Hyper V, but oh, it's okay. not like you don't get all the flexibility of it. Uh, I remember why you're talking about your music environment reminded me of something weird that I saw when when they did when they the Internet Archive did that massive upload of old DOS games. Mm, yeah, I noticed that there wasn't just games in there. There was a version of Fast Tracker too. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> I was like, <laughs> wow. Rob can make music in a virtual dot environment, except not because it doesn't run very well. And like probably everything there. Yeah, not, not much of it actually plays sound, does it? Yeah, like presumably that? there's no sound libraries available for you to... Well, it's not that when you like store XM files, isn't it? They uh, All the sound is embedded in the XM. Yeah, but you right? have to get the sounds in there to start with. Well, I have to get... No, 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 that's not a problem. The XM files are... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see what you mean. Uploading the XMs to Fast Tracker might be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the deal with that? All the DOS games are available, and you can play them all in the browser, but you can't like download them, can you? No. Well, no, yes? and, the, and the browser emulation is not very good. No. So that's they it. They have some right? software that's up there, don't they? That you can just get hold of. Yeah, some things. Okay. Like old, old things, but I, I do wonder, like, just what are the licensing problems with some of that? But or are they old enough that no one cares? Well, um, there was some, and that's just what they're going about. Like, they, they'll put it up there till someone says no. Well, what I was wondering was like where the cutoff was because there's quite a lot of things in there that things that weren't in there that I thought might have been like Microsoft's one is in there but not Microsoft's two. Yeah, and Microsoft's two was definitely DOS. Yeah, it, it didn't was. run it actually in Windows, did it? No. Yeah, it was it was it was still DOS, and there were still floppy versions of it. Yeah. Microsoft's two was definitely DOS because that's how I fucked up my machine one time. Where I accidentally managed to write Microsoft 2 into the boot. Oh, wow. <laughs> so my machine just booted into Microsoft 2. Which <laughs> <laughs> was problematic. Well, that's, all, that's great. Do you remember when we tried to install, I think it was Warcraft, and it decided to write to the root of C <laughs> and just demolished everything that was on the hard disk? <laughs> RM star dash RF. Mm. Oops. <laughs> great. Cheers, War- Cheers Warcraft. Your sound card works perfectly. <laughs> yeah, but nothing, nothing else, else works. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So uh, yes, yeah. free Windows 10, and cool. um, and they revealed some features of Windows 10, etc. That which I'd already said about in rumors and stuff, but obviously Cortana yeah. is in there and everything and all that stuff. I can't yeah. remember. Most, most of them are already work kind of. Nice. Oh, and there's an Xbox app which like lets you use your Xbox friends, etc shit or whatever it is xbox live manage your account from your pc but also you can stream games straight from your xbox one or whatever yeah it's home streaming basically yeah home streaming so it's got that um but in the but it's in the wrong direction yeah it's not in the direction i want like <laughs> yeah actually, obviously my xbox is going to be connected to the perfect place to play games your tv but it's like you want it the other way around i'm actually more interested in it's interesting that that's come up and that they've said that that's happening and that seems now the likely way that that's going to work. When actually, in fact, I want the other side of that coin, which is I want them to be able to stream the TV part while someone is still using the Xbox for games. Because they did say a while back that they were going to do that. Hmm. And it's gone quiet since then. 
Because hmm. that, that would be amazing, because in theory, that signal's just coming into the box. The Xbox is, in theory, having to run a video encoder the entire time in order to do the uh, game DVR stuff. If they right. just, like, ad- like, I guess, manipulate that so they could, like, encode the video and stream it out from there to, to a smart glass device, say. Admittedly, you'd lose your game DVR functionality for the person playing the game, but... But you could watch Sky TV on your iPad while someone was yeah. playing Halo. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, 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 maybe they hit some opposition from Sky, say. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, they want Sky want you to use Sky Go or... Probably. Some, one of their other totally rubbish services. Yeah, they probably have just, just as much Skybox. trouble. <laughs> from people in the US as well. Cable people or whatever. I guess that's not as... What what happens in the in the US with does everyone have a, like a cable box or or a um, yeah I think I think a lot of uh, you, you, there, there are this, there is still over the air television but it's like local only I think so most US people have a set top box of some kind okay so that would be I would imagine to... something like a Comcast box you know yeah mm. yeah but I, I don't know if they have like the same sort of standards that we do for like having you know a national set of channel channels at least that you know you can get over the air through something like freeview i'm not sure that stuff exists no. um i'm not even sure yeah if they did that like there's probably still analog signals going out i guess yeah i don't know about the digital thing yeah i don't know i really don't know how that works it's weird isn't it because i think i think it's like the like the radio that a lot of stuff is just local only hmm. um There. So yeah. yeah, I want I want that to happen. Yeah, they went the way that's totally totally useless to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they went the way they they wanted to go. Obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, their use cases like mummy and daddy want to watch TV, kid wants to play game, kid can stream game to laptop. Or... I mean, at, at this point, like if we wanted to do like the the Steam home streaming to an Xbox, I think that is there a possibility now in Windows 10 that Microsoft could just do that themselves? Like they don't necessarily need Steam to be the thing that encodes the video and sends it. Could they just build that into Windows 10 that you can sling your desktop somewhere else? Mm, probably. There you go, problem solved. <laughs> I don't know if they will though. Uh... No, but they could. <laughs> hmm. I'm just, I'm just saying. Hey, Phil Spencer. Yeah, because the Xbox app. I, I got some seen... words of wisdom for you. It seems to be aware of what games you're playing and stuff on the PC. So I don't know. Obviously, they didn't show any screenshot of any kind featuring the word Steam in any way. But it's like, obviously, they they need some kind of integration there. If they want their Windows to be aware of what's being played on it, like PC game-wise. Like, they say there's a DVR, like a game DVR, for PC games on Windows. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so they mentioned that. So but whether they're that tapping requires... into the DirectX layer the same way that the Steam dashboard thing does, I don't know. Maybe. But surely that requires them to be running some kind of middleware like Games for Windows Live. Well, yeah, but they've retired to... that, so what are they I know, they, but what, 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 yeah, what are they doing now? Yeah. I don't know. Or is, or is Xbox Live just going to be what they call it? Like, it it's still Games for yeah. Windows Live, but we've called it Xbox Live now. <laughs> yeah, but they, I, I mean, they didn't say... Uh, Asterisk, you know, only in these games that feature this weird system that we haven't launched yet, but maybe they will. But I mean, they it just sounded like if you're playing a PC game, you can just. just you in can theory, just that will work with it. anything that's using DX then, or anything that's going through your graphics card in a certain way. Yeah, I reckon so. That's the only they, way they could do that, right? Well, yeah. Or would they have I mean, to do it at driver level somehow? Or Well, they do control the DirectX drivers and et cetera, don't they? So, I mean, the DirectX stuff, so. They're launching a new sure, version but... of that, which is like DX12 or whatever, mm. alongside Windows 10. So maybe it's part of that. Yeah, that DX12 stuff will eventually make it to Xbone as well, in theory. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that's what they said oh, at one point. Oh, well, maybe I'm getting confused. Maybe they. Because the Xbone launched with DX10, I think. And they then eventually patched in DX11. Right. Um, so maybe it's that. I can't remember which way around it is. It would be great yeah. if they could move DX12 to Xbone, because in theory, the performance increase that that thing offers on its own would be great. 
Sure. Good thing for the console. I wonder how many like new graphical techniques and stuff that are in 12 that need a, a newer kind of G, GPU sure. stuff I reckon than, than yeah, is actually I d- I definitely, in the console. You're probably right. There's some stuff there that they probably won't be able to do, and I explain. But I, it, I, I thought that from what I'd seen that DX12 was just a general pretty good performance increase. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So the other Microsoft news was HoloLens. <laughs> do you see this? I did. I mean, no, the production video is bullshit, obviously. Obviously. The whole, the whole calling it a fucking hologram is bullshit. <laughs> well, yeah. Because <laughs> it's not a hologram. It's not what hologram means. You've made an AR thing. <laughs> yeah. That's what that actually is. You made Google Glass with your whole face. Why do they call it holograms? I don't know. Because a hologram want... physics... What makes it a hologram? Like, um, you know, like those crappy things that print onto... Yeah. Yeah, it was multicolored things. Yeah. Well, I don't know if those even count as technically holograms. No, I don't think they do. I think so holograms is just a, a hologram. I always thought holograms was just a very generic term labeled as something that is actually being pro- projected or visible on a 2D plane, but actually looks 3D. So in theory, you could probably call 3D TVs like making holograms in some way. Or... But then that can't be right. Is that it? <laughs> but that's the thing the, the word is the used word. in so many places for so many stupid things that actually maybe the word hologram doesn't have a meaning anymore well, I, I think the, the, the common like common perception of what hologram means is basically like a freestanding light model <laughs> I think that's what everyone wants it well, no, that's, yeah, yeah, everyone, that's what everyone automatically associates hologram with yeah. the word yeah, so everyone, regardless everyone of what it actually means <laughs> Everyone wants it to be Obi Wan. You're my only hope. Yeah, you know? exactly. I'm gonna look up the word hologram. So basically, you're like, regardless of what it actually means, that's just like that's what they're trying to tap into. Obviously, they want the people think of the holograms to be like, yeah, holograms are cool, and then it's like, oh, it's some shitty glasses I have to wear. <laughs> <laughs> but people seem to be impressed. Everyone who's tried it seems to be impressed with, by the the their like Mars explore Mars thing. That they seem mm. to have working already and stuff. I, like that. I still can't help but feel like, at least in that like that Mars demo or something that they show, or at least what they were making it look like, you know, someone's going to trip over a desk at some point. Or something. Yeah, naturally. But the, at least you can see the desk, unlike in freaking, uh, unlike in Oculus. The holograms would have to be like sort of semi-transparent, right? They're not going to be able to get perfect opacity. Well, I mean, that's why they. That's why AR is worse than holograms. <laughs> Because if it was a hologram, it would project it into the space it had available rather than just projecting over things that already exist. Hmm. What, so if you put something inside the thing, inside the hologram, it would... But it's like, if, if it was a, like, say you could somehow rig up your living room to be a hologram projector, a hologram yeah. holo suite... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what then, they're trying to trying to do at the end with like Minecraft, right? You could like, you could, well, yeah, like, but then project like Minecraft into your living room. In an ideal case, I mean, I guess you can theoretically do it with AR technology, but it's like it should only project images into the spaces of your room. It's like yeah. so actual like furniture and stuff should be obstacles, which would make it look weird because obviously, like, oh look, my couch is clipping through the Minecraft world. Well, that's <laughs> kind that's, of what they showed. Right? Yeah. In, I mean, in, that's that's the, that's what you have to do because that's like a safety thing. <laughs> yeah. Because if you cover up actual physical objects that exist, then you're going to have problems. Yeah. And I that's, mean, it, that's a matter of like how well the AR can detect objects that aren't like, you know, obviously yeah. the AR think, usually detects like specifically encoded things like QR codes or whatever. Or but this AR thing, equivalent. this, this, goggles set thing which is apparently a whole computer you know so you don't need to plug it into something it is it is a machine in itself um so it works independently of like a pc or something but presumably the front of it has got connect style technology to scan what's in front of you and determine with depth sensing because that that's microsoft research as well isn't it so it's like combine that with everything else. I mean... Which is immediately why everyone was like, oh, no, he's just like <laughs> thinking about how well Connect works. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, it works. It, it, Connect it's, works. It's, all... it's just the application, uh, yeah, isn't it? I, I, think, I think it's obvious that whatever HoloLens is right now, it probably isn't as 
it's not going to be where they want it to be. The text just not there yet. And just think of what how how much processing power is going to be needed to actually make that thing function as they say it should. Well, I mean, because they, like, they claim that it runs without a PC backing back, it up. Backing it up, which yeah. uh, like how can now all that be happening in that headset with yeah. current technology? I, I I can't believe that's true. Yeah, well, at like, least it's bulkier than like a Google Glass, which is has sure. a little mobile. Well, yeah, they're not they're not whatever. they're not making any like misconceptions here. There's not something you wear everywhere. No, no. Sort of no. They, they, they look like the specific environments they're using for is like you know some defined location. Yeah, like work or play, out or which I think is smart. Know. Much yeah. smarter than the Google Glass thing where. Well, yeah, because you're using it at home in the privacy of your own home, and it's not quite so socially unacceptable. Exactly. Like, I mean, surely the main problem with a whole AR headset thing is that it's the exact same problem as the Oculus have. It's just like lag. Because if you turn your head, then yeah. the AR has to follow. So it has to detect the room and then re-move the AR um, around. On top of it, without it yeah. turning around, yeah. Without it jiggling or whatever. Oh, exactly. That's going to be the main problem, presumably. Well, at least so. it's the shared problem between, sort of. Between... Sort of, I mean... Wait, do you think one of those is worse than the other? I, I guess they're pretty much the same, aren't they? Yeah. Because it's just projecting outwards instead of projecting inwards. I mean, not really. <laughs> it probably is worse for the AR, well, for the hollow thing. But, but I mean, they're getting much better at it with the Oculus, so presumably they can improve the latency for both in a similar fashion, maybe. to know. And then obviously that, or I guess the other sort of layered problem that the AI version has is that like how accurately it's like a, it's sort of like pixel scaling to your environment it's like how yeah. accurately the connect sensor type thing can detect the edges of things to be able to AR over them or whatever yeah okay. so effectively <laughs> holograms well, the, the, the hologram term that Microsoft is using is not a fucking hologram <laughs> I mean it's, it's, it's not it's just, it's just 3D imagery being Put onto it. What they call that? Uh, it's it's uh, like the, they call it like the peppers effect or something. According to this Wikipedia article, which is the same, like not a hologram technique, but is enough to fool you that they used for like three uh, D concerts, like when the gorillas characters supposedly were on stage. When Tupac right, yeah. was on stage, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. It's uh, oh, I'm trying to. It's it's in the category on the Wikipedia article labeled things often confused with holograms. I was known as Pepper's Ghost. Is the is the technique, but people call those. Uh, well, that's just like light reflected onto a glass pane, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Like the glass pane is transparent enough that you can't I mean, see it. <laughs> the, the word hologram is 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 for those like sort of rainbow effect, like two D printed things that are, you know have to you know, sort of somehow laser made right things that show a three D object and you can tilt them. And it's also involved in the the reconstruction of those. So, the the form of I don't know, Obi Wan, your only hope, holography. That's actually holography as well. Okay, so that that counts. Um, but Microsoft shit definitely doesn't. <laughs> well, we we already knew that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we just didn't know what the fuck holograms yeah. actually meant. <laughs> like lenticular dis- lenticular displays are also not holography. Okay, so three like glassless three D TVs, not holography. <laughs> um, those little bits of paper that you used to be able to bend as a kitten. It's like, oh, it's like 3D or an animation <laughs> or something. Not holography. Okay. So anyway. Okay. The official word. The official word. So what I, is I, the I, word Don't get me wrong. I really like the idea of it. I think it's cool. I like the idea of being able to sit at my desk and have my desk extended far beyond what screen capacity I have. Sure. Don't get me wrong. That sounds awesome, but it, it's, it's a thing to definitely want. Whether or not they'll get there anytime soon, highly doubtful. <laughs> we have to try it. Basically, this is, yeah, that's how it the, was with the Oculus, anyway. No, it's it's great that they're researching it. I yeah, think I think it's cool. Um, I don't know how they'll tie it. To, they'd desperately try it to Windows, etc. But you never know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with the thing. It seems like a weird thing to announce. You, do you know what I mean? Unless they want like what they have now, they think is kind of okay to get some stuff to experiment with i think that's the reason yeah you know is it going to be like google glass and not really become a consumer product you know i but i was kind of against google glass from the start because it just seemed dumb so i don't know this this seems more in the category of like of of like oculus where it's like a cool niche thing 
mm. where rather than a universal dumb thing. <laughs> Yeah, like like Siri or whatever. That seems well, it's, like a universal. It's, it's the other thing. stuff, like the, the hand gesture stuff. Is like, is that really going to work? You know. <laughs> they, yeah, they I don't think so. That. So that's quite good for from the point of view of the Hololens thing. Is like, I don't think you know you can sit and use a freaking keyboard while you're while you're wearing it or whatever, can't you? Because you yeah. can see it or you can see normal things. You don't have to wave around or whatever do all that um you don't have to do the minority report thing you can use more standard inputs or whatever with combined mm. with the crazy augmented reality thing it'd be kind of cool if you were stuck on a train where you had no space for 15 monitors or whatever and you just uh, had them projected onto <laughs> yeah, yeah onto the window or whatever i don't know Still, it's a thing. And also, Phil Spencer was wearing a Battletoads t shirt. Okay, good. And so the rumor mill has started thinking well, every time Phil Spencer wears a t shirt of an old game franchise, it's revealed <laughs> a few months later that they're actually making it. Well, that, that doesn't make any sense. Well, Battletoads is owned by Rare, so technically. <laughs> oh, no, or is it? Or is Battletoads. No, yeah. Battletoads must be Rare. Or is it Blizzard? It might be Blizzard. I think it might be Blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, that happened with Crackdown, didn't it? <laughs> and but, I mean, okay, so even even if we re- re- disregard the bit that like we don't know who owns it and maybe Microsoft like, could get a hold of it, yeah. what the fuck game are they going to make out of Battletoads? Oh yeah. <laughs> or even if it's just you know a, a modern a, a new Battletoads, you know, like it's not like a new Battletoads. Yeah. Like, what game even would that be? Be a two day retro brawler. Well, if they want, if they. That wouldn't be a new game, in my opinion. That would be a remake at that point. Well, no, you can still make a new game, like in the, in the same way that Scott Pilgrim is a new game, but it's still a 2D brawler. Yeah, but that's that's also a new IP. I think if you're making a Battletoads game, you're making a remake, because it's just like, it's just fucking Battletoads. I don't know, I, I think they would avoid that just because of the history of remakes of 2D brawlers has been bad. Like, Turtles in Time. Those double dragon games. <laughs> Neon's apparently not very good. Yeah, I know. But they're yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so if they did Battletoads like that, that might be funny. Well, maybe, but it would be awful. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. It wouldn't sell. Well, it's it's not, why would they do I don't that? think it's going to be good in any case. I don't know. I don't know. It'd be interesting. So the rumor mill is started. That's all I want to say. It's like there's no, you could like turn Battletoads into a different type of game, could you? It has to be a platform. That's basically all that game is. Unless you wanted to like go Star Fox or something, I don't know. <laughs> They're in space. You can have a space shooter. I might not remember it right, but I thought it was a, like a sort of double dragony or turtles sort of. Oh, it's fighter. a side scrolling brawler type thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's some, uh, you know, there's the jet bikes. Yeah, section the, the classic that. jet bike section that everyone hates, and the weird scrolling platform snakes and all that stuff. No, oh, I don't remember that. No. Oh. Yeah, it's basically a size already in platform brawler, so you know you can turn that into a different type of game. First person shooter. Well, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Still, okay. What else is happening? <laughs> what else is happening? News. Origin just gave away Theme Hospital. I noticed, so I yep. <laughs> grabbed that. <Yep>. Actually, <laughs> awesome. Keep adding all those shitty games that they're going yeah. to keep it, add them to the Origin library. Yeah, that's not, that's a, not a bad one. I was a I bit disappointed that. in SimCity 2000 because it was like the weird DOS version. That what? No, it's it? not. It's well, it's the special edition, so it's the proper version after they updated it. Right. Not. It's not like a. It's actually a. It's technically a newer version than the version that I have on that CD on my actual mm. on my actual disc. <laughs> Or at least I assume it is. I looked at the files and I'm pretty sure that's the the special edition has like the editor and stuff, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Doctor required an inflator room. <laughs> like uh, that theme hostel is the one where I lost my discs for that, and I was like, oh, where, where the fuck are they? Because oh. how the hell the hell did I lose theme hostel? I, I I even had I already had two copies of that at one point because I had the original version, and then at some point. I think I lost that, and I got the second version where they had to change the green cross symbol because the, oh yeah <laughs> because they caught caught heat from whoever uses the green cross symbol yeah not the red cross <laughs> yes they changed it to like an asterisk or something yeah yeah, yeah. so I already had two fucking versions of that CD at I some think point I had a version I have a ISO copy of it 
from some time at the past. I have no idea where that actually turned up on my hard disk. It's just there now. Yeah, where's that come from? Yeah. But now I have this, now I have the old origin as well. So there you go. That's all right. Maybe it will, or maybe it will run without having to fuck around. Maybe it will run better on Origin. I doubt it. It's like how much work did Origin? How much work did EA do to make their old games run appropriately in new environments? Because I think last time I tried Free Master, it had a re- it had a real problem with like uh, the cursor would some would sometimes stick into the you know it'd leave a trail or whatever mm. mouse cheese. <laughs> 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 I love that mouse cheese. So yeah, that's a oh, fucking origin. What, what else is news? Oh, well, well, I, can, if, I can do my bit of news. Um, well, shall I do the more shit news? Well, first okay. Of all? Um, staying with like the big guns, I suppose, because <laughs> presumably you don't have any Sony or Nintendo. News. No. Um, I just want to say this, just because. Do you remember how dumb the seg the E three segment was on powers? Barely. Yeah. The epic half an hour of this guy talking. <laughs> yeah, about a TV show that is totally unproven and obviously no one cares about yet. Yeah. Um, that is only going to be shown on PlayStation Network. Uh, apparently that's coming. <laughs> okay. And it will be <laughs> av- cancelled. It will be available in March. Is it, the word. I every, got... Everywhere or only in the US? I don't know. Didn't, didn't see that detail. Oh, okay, good. Um, and I guess the other thing on Sony's front is they finally announced the... We might have talked about this before, but I'm not sure. They finally announced the pricing for PlayStation Now. Hmm. Um, and it sounds bonkers! <laughs> it's like 15 quid a month or something to uh, to gain access uh, to PlayStation Now. And it's like uh, 15 quid a month to, to perhaps play a game a month, I guess, to get through it on a shitty streaming connection. It's just like playing MMO, isn't it? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I don't know. It, that seems like too much money. Probably. So yeah, I think it was more than that if you went for one month at a time. Like, but it's like fifteen pound a month if you went for the. Oh, sorry, fifteen dollars probably yeah. a month. <laughs> well, that's actually cheaper then. <laughs> yeah, sorry, fifteen dollars. But then again, you're getting all these free games through PlayStation Plus anyway. It's like, why would you need this service? I mean, why, just why? If, if the ones you want are on the PlayStation Plus. <laughs> yeah. And that was the other thing. Like, it's like, the, apparently, like, the list of games is has a sort of weird, weird uh, um, absences, I suppose. With the, like, they had the first Uncharted game, but not two and three, for instance. Or um, there seems to be a number of, like, gaps that seem a little odd in the library. But yeah, that happened. Or is happening. I wonder how successful it will be. I'm betting on no. Um, <laughs> no successful. <laughs> no successful. Huh? <laughs> and Nintendo news. Nintendo is stopping sales um, of their hardware and software in Brazil because of the insane import tax that they have. Well, and yeah. unlike Sony and Microsoft, they're not prepared to build a factory in Brazil. Well, when they say they're stopping sales, were they actually selling stuff there before? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> were they just paying the import tax and then making no money? I guess. Or well, they probably weren't <laughs> selling any because like the cost of that must have been like crazy money. Oh, I guess. Didn't they say that like when PS4 launched or something in Brazil, because they weren't being made in Brazil, they were like several thousand dollars. Yeah. Um because import tax is insane. Yeah. That seems uh, weird. For your like nation's economy to do that. <laughs> But think of all the time people are playing video games and they're doing more productive things. <laughs> <laughs> like playing football. <laughs> well, that didn't seem to help them out during the World Cup, did it? No, no pretty bad. German efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Maybe you just uh, need to like really like get rid of all the blood in all your games. <laughs> That's the key. That's the German way. <laughs> hey, guys. Correction, Cole. Yeah. You know our reward for best sound effect in the game mm, of the no. year? No, <laughs> I've already forgotten. Do you not remember it? It was from Plants vs. Zombies, and we gave it to what well, I incorrectly identified it as the future cactus, which is the, the laser-powered cactus okay. character. And it should have been the plasma pea. Oh, okay. <laughs> a remarkable correction. <laughs> It's the same sound, but I got, I got the wrong sound. It's character. that sound that Rob made on the podcast. Yeah. I do vaguely remember it now. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the same sound, but it's like it's. Like, you were you were it wrong. Yeah, I got it. Sound so effect of the year, twenty fourteen, goes to the plasma P. <laughs> not, <laughs> not in fact the uh, what was it? Cactus. <laughs> cactus of some kind. Yeah, cactus. Got we got the other bit of Nintendo news. What was the other bit of Nintendo news? They're getting rid of the reward program. Oh yeah, for Club Nintendo. Not that I ever managed to. Uh, no. to not that they have anything worthwhile on that program anymore. They used to at one point. Yeah. Um, or that you know, actually accruing the points needed to get anything seems freaking hard. I could have got a lot more points than I had if I'd actually bothered to put in all my 3DS games. Well, you still can. You've got until <laughs> well, yeah, that's you've, true. You've got until March to redeem your codes, and I've got a few things that I could probably redeem. And then you've got until September to actually, I think it was September they said to actually spend your points. So you got some time. You got some time. Put all those games in and see if it amounts see if to anything get, at all. And you could probably get it like. I think like the top thing to go for is like a notebook with like a mushroom on it, or something, <laughs> you know. And it's like several thousand points. You would have thought they would have just started putting amiibos on there. I mean, that would be instead of getting rid of it, <laughs> just use it as a way to distribute more amiibos into the into the world. <laughs> but I suppose they want people to buy those yeah. for money. I think amiibos are selling pretty goddamn well. Last well, I heard, yeah. Why is that? There's that weird black market for like amiibos with missing pieces and stuff, right? Oh yeah, that well, are, like, I saw that. In the box. Like factory defect market. That's, yeah, that's yeah. like all all of everything and ever. Donkey Kong's with a missing lower jaw. <laughs> kind of rubbish. Wasn't there? A, a, wasn't there one of the models got the the same arm twice, like two left arms for that reason? Like, <laughs> how would that even work? And, uh, how would you even? Unless it's oh, I guess it could be. Attached below the shoulder, I guess. But... Like, then it would actually. It's not if it wasn't with the shoulder. Because if it was with the shoulder, you'd end up with something a bit weird. It's like missing pieces I can sort of get, but like the same piece attached twice. Like, how does that even happen if it's all factory made? Or it fell off the right hand arm conveyor belt and onto the left hand arm conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah, they were just next to each other. And... <laughs> yeah, you know, just happened to line it up so it connected correctly. Yeah, but... Uh, that's all I got for news. No, it isn't. Well, it's not because I've got <laughs> because you've got news, and I bet I, and I bet I have the same news. Okay, hit me. There's going to be an expansion pack for Guild Wars Two. That was the Woo. news. Yep. Which is weird because it's just like, well, I mean, the old Guild Wars expansions. I mean, it looks like this is going to work in the same way, where it's it's just like you just carry over your character carries over. So you just continue with your previous characters into the new content. So it's basically like a paid for version of what they've already been doing. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be like presumably a bigger scale. Presumably, and, yeah. It's hard to know what they, they were talking about updates to World Be World and well, there's always um, updates. And, <laughs> you know, Guild Be Guild would be a thing, and, uh, and but the, but then are, like are things like that going to just roll into the main game, or do you need the expansion to actually get these? You know, well, I mean, in the, in the old one, you know, you could bring stuff from the expansion back to the old. Game. Yeah. Although in the old in the old Guild Wars, it was like a little more of a sharp delineation between the two. Because I mean, could see in Guild Wars too, it could just be like you could just have a new map area. Well, yeah, they, they are doing that as well, and they like they're going to the jungle, right? Well, Which, no, I didn't mean like that. I mean, they're going to I mean, they, the Marumba jungle. You hope, I better hope you like spiders. <laughs> you fucking spiders again. No, I meant, I meant like they could just put it on the normal map for Guild Wars 2 and it could just be another area that you can go to. Oh, sure, right, yeah. Maybe not maybe not smoothly, like if they had a world portal that you could only walk through if you bought the big search pack, that might be a bit weird. Yeah. But they could still use the Waypoint system or the Asura gates. I guess, yeah. And then just have it on the actual main map, whereas in like original Guild Wars, it's like you have to go to a guy in the city and talk to him, and then he puts you on a boat, which takes you to the other map. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I reckon though, it, there's plenty of space on that map. Well, yeah, that, that they could use. I, I, there's sorry, plenty I of space on the Guild Wars One map. <laughs> sure. I, I, I hope they do just use what they've got because the the jungles are where the jungle should be are on that, aren't they? Well, I mean, they already started slightly extending into it with the living world content, mm. but it's more of a desert over there. So unless it like transitions from jungle to desert and then back to jungle again, then <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Still, expansion. Let's see what happens. New character, new character class. Yeah. 
Oh, and and allowing cat classes to carry different weapon types. Well, that's I, like, it's a bit weird, but I, it's like that's just basically saying more skills for your characters. Sort of, yeah, because <laughs> I, I they really should have maybe invented at least one new type of weapon as well, or something. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Because, I mean, some of the character classes can already use virtually all the weapons. Like, Guardians can use practically everything apart from guns. Mm. (laughs) So they're not exactly benefiting much. I guess it depends how many of the additional weapons they add to each class. Like, if it's only maybe, like, one additional weapon type per class that they don't already have or whatever, Mm. then that might be... I hope there's, like, natural just, like, character benefits. Like, if you buy the expansion, like, you say you get more inventory space or something... (laughs) Something like that. Have some, well, you probably have some, get like, at least one more character slot. That's what they usually allow. Yeah, but you know, I want a bit more than that. I want some more meta stuff. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. But you are in. You're. You're never going to get it anyway because you're not oh, done know. with the original. Oh, I never will be. No, exactly. That's like, what I said. Because <laughs> I, I want more, like I don't know, straight content more than straight grinding. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be up my street. It's like how but... much more? It's like assuming it's similar <laughs> of, of a, like a personal story and then open world maps that you complete mm. for map completion and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's fine. I mean, they've already said it's not going to like change the level cap or anything. They're not going to try. They're going to try and avoid power creep. Well, that's kind level. of weird in itself. Like they're still going to fix everything to eighty. I mean, theoretically, everything is the same level in Guild Wars because of the level scaling. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's, even then, it's just like that seems kind of it's, it seems like something they should try try and work in there somehow. But then again, well, I, but didn't they say something about a new mastery system? That, well, sort that of. That might be the thing to go for if you want to become a bit more powerful or something. Well, the trouble, the trouble with the Guild Wars system is that they, they already have, like... It's sort of in the same way as Destiny has their stupid light levels on top of your level cap. Mm. It's like Guild Wars 2 already has two or three different things that operate essentially like that. Yeah. Like, for the fractals, you have agony resistance that you have to have with special infusions on special bits of armor. <laughs> it's just like, they already basically have these added different level caps that are stack on top of your actual level cap. Yeah. How many of those can you possibly have? I think they said, like, uh, they referred to things called precursors, which I assume are the parts you need to make epic we- or legendary weapons. Well, precursors are basically... It's special exotic weapons that you use to make the legendary. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I think they said they were adding some stuff to make, perhaps make getting those more convenient. Oh, they, they have been trying to. I, and they kind of need to. I, what they should do is just add like a new set of legendary weapons. Because there's only one of each weapon, hmm. in le- oh, apart from great swords, of course, because there's the three different versions of that stupid glowy great sword okay. Sunrise, yeah. Sunset, and Eternity, or whatever they're called. <laughs> the three different versions of that but there's only one it's like that's what kind of annoys me about my theoretical goal in one day in the distant future to make a legendary weapon is I'd have to make the legendary pistol and the legendary pistol sucks <laughs> <laughs> it just takes too long for like someone like me to even well that's why they're legendary but yeah. that doesn't stop everyone else having them that's the problem it's like no. normal people are never going to get them but the hardcore people get them too easily <laughs> yeah well, it's just something like it's not something I'd want to go for because I know I'm off put by the amount I would be happy just having an exotic like I don't have one of those <laughs> we, just so. haven't, we haven't played enough in the high level areas yet yeah. really for that to happen we didn't really do that much before no it's because all a shithole <laughs> I told you yeah. I hope you like brown and zombies yeah. <laughs> but I don't. I, I, I can't remember I'm a little disappointed with the like where the enemy variety ended up going because it just didn't it felt like there should have been more, like just variety. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Guild Wars, more stuff. Could be interesting. Or at least we'll be hearing a lot about it from Zach. Yeah, there right, you go. <laughs> any more news? Any more news for any more news? Any other news? Any more news? Did you see anything about that Sid Meier's Starships thing? No. Like, very what's the deal with it? Uh, which, is it a mobile probably... game or something, or is it a full full game? No, I think it's a full fledged thing. I think they said it was mobile. Yeah, well, it might be mobile as well. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Sid, Sid Meier games could quite translate to iPad quite easily. Well, XCOM worked really nice on the iPad, apparently. 
Yeah. They're full blown well, XCOM. It's pretty much the same game, yeah. Yeah, and XCOM was like my favourite game of that year. Yeah, I would I mean, say. People said, people said it's a good version. So, yeah. so I don't know, but Starships is like a 4X thing, is it? Kinda, yeah. I think they're like moving away from like you don't like explore because there's no land. I guess you don't explore land, but you're still exploring like um, the planetary systems and things to see what's there. And there's still going to be diplomacy. Obviously, it's I I, I worry that it's just going to be a sort of skin on the classic Civ formula, you know, mm. in the same way that Beyond Earth kind of is, but changes things up in a weird way. <laughs> is it just another one of those, or is it significantly different? I'd hope that it's significantly different because it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's going to have the same grounding, but Sid Meier does what Sid Meier does, so maybe it will be... Well, you should have tried to make Beyond Earth suck this first. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't suck too badly, though. You like it, right, though, right? I'm confused. Like, what, I, I need to ask that question again. If you were going to play a Civ game right now, what would you play? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I think when I first answered this question, I answered it the same way, which is this, like... I'd play Beyond Earth because it's still new enough that I haven't completely wrung everything out of it. Right, Whereas okay. Whereas if I played sufficient games of that to know exactly what I'm doing every time. Oh, I see, okay. So it's too, It's a bit, it's just too boring to play Civ 5 because you played it too many times already. Yeah. Whereas I'm still cool. in that spot where I'd quite happily play. Well, I, I don't know, Civ 5 single player, perhaps I'm done with, even if I haven't really won it, like, ever. I don't think. <laughs> It's like perhaps I'm okay with that, but Civ Five multiplayer, I still like just. Well, yeah, that I, that is the one thing of Civ Five that I would still play. It's 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 fun to play that game whilst talking to someone, you know, and being in the in the world, and then did, like having uh, some sort of shared hatred towards the Japanese, you know. <laughs> <It's> like... Obviously. <laughs> Barbarians. Grr. 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 And that's the end of the news, apparently. Yeah, I think that's the end of the news. Did, awesome. we beat, did, we, did we beat your limit? Yeah, yeah, we're all, all good. <laughs> well, I mean, we have to fill in some more random bullshit. <laughs> we did that very much bullshit. <laughs> I got a passive aggressive post it note today. Oh, okay. okay. From who? From, well. <laughs> don't actually say who, but I meant from what? Well, I don't know. Where it's, from? I don't, I don't know who exactly. Um, so the uh, uh, parking in Cambridge, if you're like. Is is it just a bitch? Oh general. right, so it was a, it was a random public area and post-it note, not a like office public. No, no, yeah, it was it was out in the out in the open. When I say a post-it note, it was actually an A4 sheet of paper set up okay. my windscreen. That makes more sense. My car. Although like, honestly, if you were going to do passive aggressive notes, why wouldn't you just carry a pad of post-it notes around with you everywhere? <laughs> I guess. Just start yeah. all over the <laughs> thing. Just put them everywhere. <laughs> I am Mister Passive Aggressive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like, uh, like Ian, my, my mate Ian has never known exactly where his parking spot is. He supposedly has one, but at, at some point in the past, like owner of his flat or something traded his parking spot with someone else because of the location was more convenient for this other resident. Um, so it wasn't traded away into non-existence. It was like they just swapped the location of them. And so he's never quite known where exactly it is until like not that a few months ago where you supposedly figured it out and it's like it's miles away but it's over here in this like and i'm pretty sure that's mine according to all the logs and stuff like and that. Has it turned out it won't. well as it might <laughs> still be but i think no one bloody knows like <laughs> uh so yeah so i got a message on my car saying please don't park here and so, so i broke one back uh, <laughs> then what stuck it on the ground yeah <laughs> Saying, saying, please confirm this with the other residents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that happened. It's a thing. I just want to share that. There you go. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit pairing. So, who's going to start with the game? Mm, so, yeah. Um, like, sounds, sounds like he's got quite a bit to talk about. Okay. Zachary Burgess, what have you been playing? Yeah, I have to go first. But... No, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, you do. Go, I'm go afraid first. so. <clears throat> well, oh, first thing is to just like finish off some thoughts that I was having about Guild Wars while we were talking about Guild Wars. Right. Because I guess I still played a bit more of that. Not all that much. Okay, done. But I, I finished the, um, the new version of the monthlies, the 28 days of logging in. Right thing not 28 consecutive days which is the important thing 
just you just have to log in on twenty eight different days it, within a month. No, or just just, just twenty eight days, days. Okay. and then it resets and you can start again. So I eventually got to the end of that tree to find out what the you know Uber reward was that suggested it had like parts towards your making a legendary weapon or whatever. Mm. So I opened that up and I had a, had a look at the different options, and it is like. <sighs> It's technically parts towards the legendary weapon, but not really. So, like, one of the things you can get it's is... parts towards the parts of the legendary weapon. <laughs> sort of. It's so, like, one of the things you can get is a, it's ascended crafting materials, which are, like, the next tier down for legendary, basically. Mm. And but, but the thing about that was it's, it's, it gives you a random selection of, of... I can't remember what it was. It's, like, a random selection of one or two of the ascended, like, or refined ores or whatever... And I already have a fucking ton of those because it's not actually that difficult to get like bloodstone, brick dust, and dragonite ore and all that stuff. So I already have a ton of. I already, I probably already have enough of that to craft a full set of ascended armor. Maybe I haven't actually checked what the numbers are because yeah. you only need like one or two per armor part, and then just a bunch of the other materials like leather or whatever. Obviously, that's probably the part that I might struggle with. So I was like, well, fuck that. Let's look at the legendary thing. And the legendary thing is like, it's only technically, it's like half and half legendary in a sense, because it gives you obsidian ore, which is also used for the ascendant crafting, but also partially for the legendary. But what it actually gives you is some number of mystic clovers, which is interesting because like the mystic clovers part of crafting a legendary weapon, the way you get mystic clovers normally is you feed ectoplasm and some other stuff that I don't remember into the, fo- into the mystic forge. And then it has a random chance of dropping Mystic Clovers. Mm. So in order to craft Legendary, it's basically, you do actually have this like random step where in order to get the full stack of Mystic Clovers you need, you have to put a certain amount of stuff into the forge and maybe you get them really quickly, maybe you wouldn't. Mm. So in some ways, this like this end of the month bonus Mystic Clover thing is nice because it might help you bypass the randomness of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. But then on the other hand, when I was also thinking about and like what you get out of the Mystic Forge for, if you don't get the clovers, one of the things you can get from that random process is sometimes you can get other craft other like high tier crafting materials. So it's like technically you're avoiding the random, but then your the random failures might actually also generate you material that you can also use. I see. <laughs> But that's what I took anyway, mm. because the other things were like 30 laurels or whatever. And I was like, fuck it, I guess I'll just take some fucking Mystic Clovers. You use up another goddamn bank slot, because mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just going to sit there forever until I actually get, get rid of any of the other stuff I need for the legendary mm. goddamn weapons. So yeah, there you go. That was the end of the month. Oh, and the other thing that you also get that's not tied to your choice out of that end of the month thing is you get plus 1% gold fine for your account. <laughs> gold find. It, it's like I don't understand it's like gold find is literally the most useful, useless stat that you can get on your account because it's like magic find that's obviously awesome mm. to get more drops and better drops karma bonus that's obviously good because you eventually you need to use karma when you're doing like literally crafting because you okay. buy you obsidian or whatever karma for, the, for the rare materials or yeah buy, buy obsidian shards and all that kind okay. of stuff mm. So karma bonus is obviously great, but gold find is like, have you ever actually noticed how much gold you get from enemies as you're just looting everything as you're it's running around? It's like one or two problems. Yeah, it's, it's like fuck all. It's like selling. It's like selling garbage, isn't it? It's like yeah. you get nothing. You probably it. get more from selling the garbage than you actually do off most enemies. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a great use of your time. So like one percent extra gold find is not going to do you very much good, I suspect. You're better off just yeah selling any of the drops you get and stuff. Yeah, if you want, if you want gold. Yeah, exactly. Don't really need that much gold. So yeah, that's Guild Wars. Mm. Cool. <laughs> it's not. It's not Christmas any longer. <laughs> and we're, with this newsflash, <laughs> with, with this upcoming expansion, I've been thinking, oh shit, I guess I ought to actually play Living World Part Two. No, oh, okay. Because the story seems to transition fairly directly. Yeah, I've just what I've heard. So maybe I'll get round to doing that at some point. The yeah, trouble was that drag I dragged me into doing it. Oh well, yeah, well, that's true. Technically, me and you need to try, like, try and find a time where we can just commit to what, doing, doing the, the last, doing yeah. the last dungeon at least. Yeah. 
so we can see the end of the story. Yeah. I've never even done that on my main character. I really okay. should actually, <laughs> sometime when I'm just playing Guild Wars by myself, maybe commit to trying to do some of the other dungeons. Mm. I think I've done three of them out of eight in story mode. And then I've done one of them in like a couple of the, or maybe two of them in a couple of the different explorable paths. LFG. Yeah, exactly. I'll probably have to fucking. I think they they put in that looking for group system ages ago now. Yeah. But I think it has a kind of inherent problem, which is that you're advertising the party rather than advertising yourself. So technically, you can put put your put you up there by yourself and say LFG. Sure. But that's not really saying you want to join a party. That's saying four other people join me. Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> you put the party up rather than, hey, can I join a party? Yeah. I think they need to like put a, instead of a party version, have like, here's a bunch of players, but yeah. singular people to join you, your you party. Need, you need both sides of the, the coin, I guess. And then, I mean, yeah. technically people could just look at the single party and then just whisper you and say, join my party. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That yeah. would technically still work, so, yeah, it sounds, but it's not automatic. No, yeah, it, it sounds like they need a. It'd be great if you could like have some sort of like like how the marketplace has the buy and sell lists. <laughs> Just like, have a list like, of players. Yeah, so like, here's a bunch of people who are up we, and doing something. We want someone of this class, and you're like, well, I'm someone of this class, and then it joins you. Oh, that'd be awesome if they could actually have it, even, like a, like a basic matchmaking kind. Well, of Well, have it so that you wouldn't even like if you set yourself looking for group. And then just while you were doing other stuff, then just have it like send you a mail when hey, someone requested you. Hey, hey we've got your group. Yeah, someone wants to join the group. Like, do you want to come do this? And it's like, yeah, okay, awesome. That would be pretty cool. a shortcut button to just jump to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd be great. Well, there's some improvements. I guess that looking for group panel never really. It's like it was beta, and then they just sort of said that was good enough. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't feel like they ever really finished their thought on that one. No. But who knows? Maybe they won't at this point. Maybe they're too busy on the expansion. <laughs> Maybe that problem will never be solved, ever. Not even in the exception. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so that was Guild Wars. Uh, and then what I did over the last two weeks was pretty much split precisely down the middle of the two weeks, like one week doing one thing and one week doing the other, <laughs> was I played a whole bunch of logistics simulation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the more recent one first rather than the older one. Because for a change, I actually remember what the thing I did in the first week was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rather Maybe than forgetting about it. Good casts. <laughs> so this week, I played Infinity Factory. Which um, I've now seen. Which Rob has now seen because we just recorded a video of it just before this podcast. Okay. Which so is basically. that, listeners. <laughs> yeah. It's basically the sequel to Space Cam, sort of. Ah, oh, really? From sort what? Of. Same, same guy. Same yeah. guy. Same yeah. guy. Electronic Industries. Well, what it actually really is, is a combination of Space Cam and Infinity Miner, which was also him. <laughs> yeah, he, he like <laughs> has the, the quiet smugness of apparently beating Minecraft to that genre. Well, apart from then Minecraft stole his idea and made a billion, billion dollars on it. I mean, he, 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 has, to have, he has to be quietly smug. Because <laughs> quietly smug and also hella pissed. Do, well, you, yeah, you can't, Do you, you see Notch's house that he just bought? I mean, ridiculous. You be, if you were hella pissed, right, then you'd just kill yourself. You, <laughs> in this particular scenario, it's just, you, can, you can't try and be bitter, bitter about it because it would just eat you. Well, he made some other games and that's fine, I guess. <laughs> He's better at making puzzles mm. than open world things, I guess. Well, probably. Maybe. Based on my no knowledge of what Infinity Miner was actually like. I, I not a very that. complete game, I by all accounts. Came out, I remember, did, was that, that must have been one of the ones that made it to Xbox Indie at one point. Or, it sounds like one of the. I don't know about that. It was, or, or, it was a long did, time did, before. Did someone just make Infinite Miner? Well, I'm know. sure they did. Yeah. It was a long time before the Xbox Indie stuff happened, because mm. it was before Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Minecraft has existed for a much longer time. I wonder if people are still submitting stuff to the 360s indie logo. <laughs> Man. Does that still exist? Is it just 100% stupid um, party noisemakers? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or boob games. Or boob yeah. games, yes. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> talking about Infinity Factory. <laughs> talking about boob games. So yeah, I, I, you know, it's a block-based conveyor belt simulator. <laughs> <laughs> you build factories that have to take inputs, 
mash them together in some way and put them in the outfit. <laughs> it's basically like Space Camp. But there's like, yeah, you limited, it, yeah, you've got limited tools to manipulate physical objects into something that they want out. Yeah. Without breaking it. And, you know, there's gravity, which I guess, you know, the third dimension changes some things. Mm. Although I think, on average, it makes it slightly easier than Space Chem. Partly because of, like, I think it's just easier to interpret a 3D environment. For, like, when you're putting, putting a thing on a conveyor belt, you know it's going to travel along that conveyor belt. There's no overlapping loops of weird lines like there are in Space Chem. Mm. And the other thing that I think also makes it easier for, for the free, for Infinity Factory is like the 3D environment also kind of limits in some ways what they can actually do with the actual blocks and stuff. Like you can weld blocks together and that's fine, I suppose. And that's about as far as you can go. Yeah, they don't, they don't really allow you to change blocks, do they? Or like, mini, like, well, the, like the fusion mechanic. Strictly, there is a way to change blocks apart from it's not very. It's like the stamper, I suppose, right? Well, there's that, and there's also like a grinder that like shapes them into a shape, but that's really just changing one block into a different kind of block. Okay. <laughs> there's no combining, of, like, no mashing two blocks into one physical block. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you reckon that, like, that's something they might consider? Like, yeah, I reckon might, that have like blocks have... that represent materials, and you have to then combine like, the materials, like to... a paint block that you apply to another block, or yeah, something. Or something like that. Quite possibly, we'll see. Or like you take some sand and you put it in a furnace and then it comes out as glass or something. Well, you see, that was sort of what I was thinking might actually happen because it seems like it seems like there could be possibility to make much more complicated factories that involve like several step processes. Mm -hmm. There is sort of one puzzle that does that where there's a you have to put a jar onto this platform and then another item into the top of this machine and then it fills up the jar basically. Mm -hmm. It's like that's sort of getting towards that idea of having Combined materials things, that yeah. turn into things. But then again, that's like, a f that's, in all cases, those sort of things are like fixed emplacements, where it's like you have to just get the product of the machine. It's not like you're placing that machine yourself. Oh, I see. You're not having to build the, the glass filling. Yeah, exactly. Material. Which, you know, that could make things quite a lot more complicated if they yeah. introduce something along those lines. I and mean, where are you going to place your jar spout? It's like, you can put it, like, several feet in the air, and it could just fall into the jar from a great height. <laughs> yes, exactly. Your style bonus. So, yeah, the, this game has been released into Steam's early access for some reason, because it's basically... He, he says it himself on the early access description, but it's, like, it's basically finished, like, the okay. main campaign. Cool. And... During the next three to six months, which is how long the early access period is supposedly going to be, he wants to just add mini campaigns that maybe have new mechanics and blocks and stuff in. Mm. Which so he's put the framework down and the framework's the game, yeah. Hopefully, but then there's like, which is you, bit... you just want wants a bit more time to say, oh, there's probably some cool stuff I can do. Yeah, which is a bit weird in some ways. Yeah, you kind of think that they, he should that, that perhaps it shouldn't be early access. Well, it's... either it should be early access and then that you know. That's fine. Mm. Adding stuff after release isn't actually a problem. <laughs> no, that's just how games work. It's, it's a way of uh, early access, I suppose, is a way of communicating. Hey, there will be more. Well, he does say on that page as well that like he wants to communicate more with people, which I guess could be part of what early access allows you to do. I guess because yeah. it sort of it sort of tells people that that's what you want to happen. Yeah. Whereas if it's a Rather release game, just you just assume yeah. <laughs> that the developer is done <laughs> and or has his own ideas or whatever. But yeah, so it's, it's like, it, it's on early access, but it's not really early access, I suppose. Mm. But on the other hand, not to spoil anything, but the way the main campaign that's in there at the moment ends seems incredibly abrupt and also, like, open-ended, where that would be where the mini-campaigns would branch off from. <laughs> right. Which, also, which then sort of makes you wonder... That's surely not actually the main campaign finish then, because that is like it's a perfect point to add more to, which then won't be the end of the game any longer. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so we'll see anyway. Um, there might not actually be any more story elements in these mini campaigns. They might just be here's a set of levels. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's a nice contrast to your average Steam green light game, which is like completely unfinished. Well, it's not green light; it's early access. That's all oh, early happens. access, right? Okay. But either way, yeah. Either way, right. yeah. <laughs> green light is worse, though, surely. Well, green light is games that don't e you yeah. might not even be able to play yet. Games that aren't actually games yet. Yeah. But green light, you don't have to 
spend money most of the time. <laughs> well, that's not what green light's about. Is it green light is just allowing people to steam to yes for then, people then, to do the stuff, but, but then. That Presumably doesn't... people get green lighted and then they get, get green lit to put something in early access, I suppose. Well, yeah, but that doesn't stop the potential for like selling your shit on external sites, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the classic maneuvers. But that's so, not Steam's problem. So, yeah, I'm at Infinity Factory. I finished it real quick, like, hmm. because, you know, I'm also at games like Space Camp, I suppose. <laughs> Space Camp trained me well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, um... and then it's just time. Then it's just time to go back and optimize mm. because, like Space Game, it has the histograms. Mm. Like, can you make it happen quicker, or can you do it with fewer or smaller footprint as it is now? Yeah, yeah, which is pr- a pretty cool modification. Instead of the Space Game having your score based on symbols used, it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't translate directly into blocks used. It's now like physical footprint projected from the top down. So you actually have to. If you build stack things on top of each other, then it doesn't increase your footprint. So that's a different challenge in optimization. So yeah, there's that. It's a pretty good game. Mm. And then I started making some workshop levels. Find those on the Steam Workshop. Find my hilarious puzzles of locks and keys. What do we have to search for? Seg the brick or something? Well, at the moment, there's only like 50 puzzles in the whole of the workshop. So <laughs> find them on both of one and page one and page two. And and page two. Each. <laughs> they're, listed, they're listed as Zig for them right now. Yes. Yeah. It's my username. And um, yeah, I finished it really quickly. But it's actually a real weird coincidence because the fi- I've been playing this other game that I'm about to talk about for the first week. And then. Playing that game reminded me about Infinity Factory that hadn't come out yet. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's meant to come out in January, isn't it? So I went and looked at the website, and it's like, it's out now. Like, oh, <laughs> on okay. literally this exact day. And I was like, well, I get it. That's convenient. I guess I'll play that now. So, yeah, that was how I transitioned from one to the other. It was like the first one reminded me that I hadn't seen one when the second one was going to be released. And it was. So I went. So thumbs up, happy side recommend. Yep. Infinity Factory. Especially if you like Space Game. It's basically, basically more along that as lines. Like generally, if you just like sort of like... Open-ended puzzles. You know, all blo- yeah, just sort of block puzzly stuff. Because I, uh, as I mentioned on the video, I got a bit of a vibe of... It's not the same game, but some of, some of it felt like Rush, which was that block puzzle, that sort of almost choo-choo rocket inspired yeah. um, block puzzler, I guess. But, you know, it's obviously a different game, but it's like there's some of the... But it's basically some get, of the use of 3D space is get things to exits. Yeah, <laughs> the use of 3D space was reminiscent. Yeah, yeah. And the other, the other, not to like say, not to, not to do a humble brag, lol, <laughs> about my prowess of Infinity Factory, but like it, it's obviously an early access thing. Humble but when I finished it on basically the first day of release it, it declared you finished the game really quickly like near release time you might be in the first 100 people to finish it so send me an email and we'll see no, really? I highly doubt I actually am in the first 100 people to finish it so did you email him because 100 is not very many no but even so that'd be cool what's in it for you you get a Nothing. you get a patch like a physical patch Hmm. That says you're awesome at Infinity Factory, I That's guess. Cool. <laughs> you like the space so did you do that then? for real? Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah, I sent the email, but we'll yeah. see. The only way I could sort of intuit that, like how how fast I might have finished it, was like because because you can't get into the workshop puzzles either to make them or download them into the from the workshop. You can't do that until you finish the game. So when I was looking at the workshop page and there was only like two or three people making puzzles mm. and each of those puzzles has like, well, one of mine is now up to like 30 subscribers. Mm. So at least 30 to 40 people have finished the game by this point. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, maybe I do actually have a small chance mm. of being in the first hundred people. <laughs> we'll see. I doubt it, but we'll find out soon or never. You should link the guy I, guess, I guess if I don't ever hear anything... That's the problem. If I don't ever hear anything, we'll know. <laughs> That's kind of cool. But you're the guy that wrote the Space Chem Guide on the giant bomb site. <laughs> Part of the Space Chem Guide. Uh, pretty good, though. 
that then got deleted in the Great Guide Destroying Nation or whatever. <laughs> the Great Guide Destroying Nation. Well, they just that was something that happened on Giant Bomb. They decided to get rid of they decided to get rid of guides as a individual thing. So now you only have one guide per game. It's attached to the page, so it's not okay. really it's not really like Game Facts or whatever, where you can just have here's everyone's guides. <laughs> Can you just repost it on Game Facts? Well, I'm, in my case, I used a lot of pictures, but it's not in me. text format. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Even with the fancy new Game Facts HTML-ness, I expect they don't want a ton of pictures. Can you even put pictures on Game Facts? I don't even know. I don't think I've ever seen a guide, even in, in the HTML well, one, no, that has pretty, pictures. Pretty much everyone I've ever used has just been text. So yeah, there's that. That was Infinity Factory. I don't know who makes awesome. walkthroughs and shit these days. It's mostly IGN. I can't stand IGN. Well, just the thing. Most like strategy guides or hints and tips things in in any kind of like a, the official sense, as in not made by some guy using Notepad, they're always rubbish. Or they don't <laughs> tell you enough of what you need to know. It's yeah. true. The facts are official always super detailed. Guides. Not always, but often they go into so much more detail than the um, than anything like halfway. Yeah. Well, it's like 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 if I'm if I'm playing like a, a shooter or something that I'd suck at or something, or there's there's a game that I know I'm doing bad at, like or like what do I need to know to be good at this kind of thing? Yeah, like something like written by IGN, it's just never good enough because it's just no. like, well, don't do this and don't do this and this is, well, all of this I'm already doing because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, all of this is obvious. It's, like, it's not really so much of like how to be competent at the game; it's like how to get through a specific situation within the game. I guess, yeah. yeah. Because I try to look it up in in what I've been playing just to get into that next room in Alien on hard mode. It didn't help at all. <laughs> like, I tried to look up facts and stuff, and it, it, there's, like, general advice for what well, to do in hard mode. And how, then there's, I like, guess it's, like, how much randomization is there in that game? Though? Quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, in terms of the alien's behavior. Yeah, I guess. exactly. Well, I think yeah. I was just stuck in an, an, a, a, a part of level geometry where the alien just couldn't get very far away from me. So no oh, matter yeah. how... So no matter how long I waited for, or so I whip out the motion tracker, wait for it to go as far away as possible on the scanner thing, move out of the room, and then instantly die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So I just had to bump it down to medium just to get past that. Anyway, facts were no help. <laughs> so the other thing I played in the first week, fairly continuously. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There's another logistics simulator. Right. Another game that's not finished, but this time more legitimately. It's not even on Steam. It's just like, get it from their website. <laughs> right. But someone pointed me towards it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that looks like a game I'll probably like. It's a game called Factorio. More factories. More factories. Infinity Factories, followed by Factorio. The other way around. Factorio first, and then Infinity Factories. Factorio. Factorio. Basically, what it is, is... Imagine Transport Tycoon, right. except instead of trains, you're building conveyor belts. <laughs> right, giant conveyor belts. Well, not giant ones. Well, it's, not like, it's, it's like, not like scaled down. Okay, it's not like Transport Tycoon. Like, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like Transport Tycoon, as in it's a grid-based tile game where you place, in this case, trans- conveyor belts and not okay. ra- railways. Okay, sure. And so you're like, trying to move products from one factory to another to combine them, except you place the factories. Okay. So it's within the scope of, say, a giant warehouse or like a like a a, a empty plot of lands yeah, or something. Basically, like. sort of, except it's more like a planet ish. Okay. You're outside. Basically, you're it's basi- you're trying to you're trying to well, you're a lot like trying to play Infinity Factory. You're building the conveyor belts to move the items to a factory that turns them into something else and then you stick that on another conveyor and put that somewhere else. Right. Except in Factorio's case there's a lot more of a tech tree where so you have you know you mine the ore, then you convert the ore into steel plate um, iron plates. Mm-hmm. Then you take the iron plates and maybe you make a cog out of it or maybe you make a bit of steel out of it. Okay. And, <laughs> and then, then you turn those things into something. You need so many cogs and so many things to turn them into a bit like industry giant. Yeah, exactly. you so it's you're Basically, the game is trying to create a logistic system that isn't a complete mess. Right. But I can't build another truck. No, you can't build another truck. You can build trains, though. Trains do actually exist. They're just okay. sort of a more late-game thing right. for transporting large quantities of stuff over long distances. Usually, 
once you've mined out your local resource deposits, that's when you start using trains to build mining stations further away. Okay, so what's the challenge here? Well, the challenge that for me, <laughs> the actual challenge in terms of like danger is there's enemies. No, oh, really. <laughs> well, basically, the idea is that the alien life on this planet over time gradually gets stronger and gets stronger faster depending on how much pollution you're outputting. So basically how much factories you've built. Mm. So the more factories you've built in one place, the more likely the aliens are to target that location because of all the pollution coming out of it. Mm. And then you, you know, you build defensive walls and turrets and stuff. Although it's not actually very, it's not really very complicated in terms of like AI or anything. It's basically melee units that just charge into your base and try and wreck shit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so the tower defense element is not complicated at all yeah, right. you just build guns and that's it <laughs> just make sure you build guns so yeah the actual game part is like trying to manage the ridiculous amount of resources you need in a same kind of way because mm-hmm. there's no there's no reason you can't build ridiculously long conveyor belts apart from having to spend the resources to build the conveyor belts I guess <laughs> Or like really long pipelines to put oil around the place to where you need it. Mm. But then, you know, if you want to do it in a sane way, you're trying to think like, like, for example, in, in like a lot of the different things that I'm making in these factories, I need electronic circuit boards. So why not have like a centralized place that makes a fuck ton of electronic circuit boards as fast as possible and then use conveyor belts to ship them out to the various other places that use them? Okay. So it's like you're trying to create these networks of the conveyor belts, basically, that are um, allowing you to create things as fast as possible to be able to create the next thing as fast as possible. And then, broadly speaking, what you're actually building, in the end, everything turns into science, basically. In order to unlock the tech tree and theoretically get to whatever end game there is at the moment, because obviously the game's not finished, Mm. there is some kind of basic end game situation where you research this last thing and then something happens. <laughs> okay. But in order to get to that point, you're basically turning all these items that you're building in various factories into science, which is basically science packs. And then those go into a lab- laboratory and then you get science. <laughs> but then, the, so there's like four different grades of science packs. So like the first one for the early types of technology is very easy to make. It's just like copper plate and a cog. And then, like, the second science pack is, like, a grabby arm and a conveyor belt. Combine them to make a science pack. And then, obviously, once you get to the tier three science, you're combining, like, four different complicated things that you've had to make out of oil and coal and all kinds of stuff. And so just, like, getting a certain amount of science being suddenly unlocked new pieces so you can do more stuff and resources. Well, you, you choose which technology you want to research next, but then as you go further up the tech tree, it's like they require all three kinds of science or whatever. So that's how it steps it. I just got the music from Startopia in my head. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> just the researching bit, I guess. Yeah. Sticky stuff on the table. Research this. Yep. Yeah, that was Factorio. There's a lot of there's a lot of grabby arms. That's how you get <laughs> stuff on and off of conveyor belts. It's actually like a fairly complicated system of like simulation that they've made like because the way things are actually on the conveyor belt they are actually it's not just it's not just like pipelines they're actually f- simulated a physical object on a conveyor belt and it occupies a certain amount of space okay. so then if you're transitioning from like a slow conveyor belt to a fast conveyor belt they space they out and then you can put okay. another one in there or whatever oh i see right oh. And like corners slow down the outer edge more because they travel further and stuff oh, okay interesting wow <laughs> And then, uh, and then for like the grabbers that put stuff on conveyor belts and take them off, each conveyor belt has two sides, like a left lane and a right lane. And the grabbers put stuff onto the furthest away lane, so you can use that to basically put two different products onto the same conveyor belt by loading it from the opposite sides. Mm. And then you've got like grabbing arms with longer arms that can reach two squares away and interact with another conveyor belt, so you can have two two conveyor belts feeding into one factory. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It's all about conveyor belts. So is, is there like a money system as well? That no, really... it's just the resources, really. Okay. So it's not going to cost you cash to put stuff down and you have to manage how much profit you're making in order to build more stuff? No, or... you're just like, you just have to get the resources for it. Hmm. Everything costs metal, okay. <laughs> basically. <laughs> Take this metal. 
And you add another metal. And yeah. you get a better metal. I, find it, I thought it was a bit weird how steel is just made out of iron. Oh, yeah. Because I thought... Where's your, where's your carbon? Yeah, I thought... I thought you Originally, I thought that was why you were still... Why you'd make it in a furnace, because the f- furnaces can use coal as a fuel. But it turns yeah, out you can yeah. still make... You can still make steel in an electric electric furnace. So <laughs> an electric oven. Yep. Just wedge that in there. I was listening to a film podcast the other day. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. were talking about how I haven't seen the film, but they were talking about how in American Hustle they refer to a microwave as a science oven. <laughs> <laughs> Just made me laugh. Cook food in your science oven today. <laughs> yep. That sounds like something they would have said at some point in the 50s. Yeah. The science oven. The science oven. <laughs> Jesus, the science. <laughs> it does. You're gonna, you're gonna just like a regular oven size. Yeah. In the same way that you can make a pack of just pure science. <laughs> yep, the science pack. It's like they can cook with like pure science now. That was all I played. That was pure science. Look, one week. That was pure science look like? Infinity Mine or the other. Infinity Mine or the other. Pure science in, in science facts in Factoria are, are on giant beakers of, <laughs> of brightly coloured liquid. That seems sensible, yeah. Which somehow is like, take this iron cog and this copper plate and make a beaker of red science. <laughs> I just like, Obviously. Like, so if it, in, a, in a science oven, I, I just imagine like you're throwing t- lots of pairs of glasses in it. Like those, those black rimmed glasses <laughs> just throwing them at food and they get hot. Okay. <laughs> That's how you represent science, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Classes. Well, actually, what you do is you represent, <laughs> represent you, you, um, recognize, you, know, you, you represent them as a, uh, as a cockney molecule in a box. Yes, that is exactly how you, that's what science is. <laughs> what? What by box? <laughs> <laughs> a cockney molecule. <laughs> Is that a molecule that 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 was a, a molecule that came into existence, <laughs> existence within the sound of the bow bells? Yeah, <laughs> any particle accelerators in London. <laughs> yeah, don't right, mate. <laughs> any kind of decay that happens, atomic decay that happens within that range of those bells, produces cockney. <laughs> the radiation is cockney. Cockney yeah. radiation, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, this is a good segue. <laughs> is it? Yeah, strange, Somehow. Strangely. Speaking of stupid molecules. Okay. <laughs> I I started watching Halo Nightfall. Right. Wait, what's that got to do with stupid molecules? Oh, Hear yeah. Me it, Hear me out. Because that was the whole like, premise that they talked about in the trailer of it sounded insanely stupid. Right. So it, carry it's on. Pretty d- it, yeah, it's pretty dumb. It's like... The first episode of it is actually pretty well made, I have to say. Like, I'm kind of impressed with, like, I get a very much a, a, a sort of Battlestar vibe from its production value. Okay, that's you good. Know, it, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty well, I don't think the acting's good, I think the, the initial setup sounds fine. Apart from the fact that they are going to a piece of, they are effectively going to a piece of the broken alpha halo. Okay. Um but they can only go there at night because of the way it's spinning or something that it's actually cool at night. But it, when it spins around, it's so it's got so close to the sun now or something. That oh, okay. That, it burns <laughs> we have night. to have had to move, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but on as a result of the burnination or something or the destruction, it exposed this new undiscovered element that is super poisonous to humans and humans alone. <laughs> And the Covenant have made some kind of biochemical biobomb or something but that would, uses this element. But then that element would still exist on the night side because it would just turn around. <laughs> but they, they only get it from the terrain, so they have to go get it at night is the idea. So if you mine before, Installation okay. zero 04, you get some stuff that only kills humans? It, it seems that way, yeah. What? It's pretty dumb. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. It's like I would believe them if they would, they, they would say it would... Like, if they don't... If they called it some sort of substance, just any kind of substance, a compound or something that we haven't seen before, something like that. So the fact that they call it an element, I just think is really dumb. Oh, isn't it? Like, well, well, like, yeah, mm. yeah. Because I guess <laughs> if it was an could... element that we hadn't discovered, it would probably be like super fast decaying and yeah, and like, yeah. It's like it would be poisonous there. because of the radiation. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then ep- I've only seen up to episode three or five. But I've seen, but they're like, yeah, it goes a bit dumb and a bit dark, naturally. 
It's very dark. Like, I mean, dark visually. Yeah, we're like, like, <laughs> you can't see what's going on, dark. Yeah, it's actually kind <laughs> right. of, t- it's, it's almost too dark. You, yeah, it's difficult to see in places. Like, technically, you could imagine that there could be a, like, what with the forerun- forerunners and all that shit in Halo being what it is, it, there is a very marginal amount of sense making that there would just be something in the, in the Halo rings that is poisonous to humans. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but it would probably be just as likely to be poisonous to Covenant, given that the forerunners weren't aware of either, right? Because they came before both, both right? Existed. Okay, so do you want some more dumb that's not related to this? <laughs> Like the, the, the some of the plot, the plot, the main plot lines here are what don't work for me. Like the element thing, okay, fine, I could, I could forgive it if we just swap out the word element for compound. Okay, maybe, maybe I can accept that. Maybe they just had a, someone who didn't know enough science in their writing team. Unobtainium. <laughs> yeah, if they only um, said molecule, then everything would have been good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, unobtainium. Uh, compound. This is a this is another dumb section, right? Okay, it's sort of spoilery here. But they find themselves stuck, obviously. And, oh no, the day is coming. Yeah, presumably. pretty much. <laughs> and the only way of escape at this point in the show that they've, they've thought of is a there's, there's like ten of them or something, and there's like a only a two man vehicle. About. <laughs> oh no, leave everyone behind. <laughs> yeah, and so well, how is that going to pan out? But then I won't go into the why here. You'll just have to hear me out. They. The two-man vehicle actually has a quite a big storage container because they brought horses with them in this thing. <laughs> okay. How do you do? Oh, I yeah. There's, 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 they're, they've explained why they do this as well. Like, there's a certain logic here. But then no, it occurs to none of them that why don't people just stay in the storage container? There's enough room for all of them to just go in this place where they were keeping two bloody horses. Because <laughs> horses are, like, just as... Air breathing as humans. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, they, they, no, none of them think of this. It's like it's, it's a two-man vehicle, and it's like with a giant storage container. <laughs> I want to know why they brought horses to a partially destroyed Halo ring. There must some kind of electromagnetic <sighs> radiation I, I, I fucks t- up with all your electronics. I can tell you if you want. So like, oh, it, do, you, do you reckon anyone cares? Like, spoiler well, it just sounds dumb. So I can't. All right, here we go. Here we go. Is. Here we go. Spoiler alert. Um, the guys going to obtain the unobtainium, let's call it. It hasn't got a name thus yeah. far. The element. Um, go there because on the surface of the thing, there seems to be a collection of uh, worm-like species that are attracted to any kind of magnetic radiation. Or oh, so they like, need organic transport that isn't like... Yeah, right. basically technology. So what about the Covenant? <laughs> well, the Covenant aren't there. No, you said they were there. They were mining no, no, the stuff. No, no, the Covenant hire people from poor planets oh, okay. to go and do it for them. Well, like humans. In this case, yes. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> How are the Covenant hiring humans? Are they do it through some black network where they don't <laughs> reveal that they are the Covenant. In fact, well, no, they are the Covenant. But it's like the the the, the way they set that up is these poor countries will do anything to get, or these poor planets will do anything to get some sort of. Uh, way of support. But humans are going to be the know, worst they... miners of like human poisonous stuff. They <laughs> yeah, exactly. die instantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I, don't, I don't know. Presumably they know what the fuck they're doing, or maybe the element in that form isn't poisonous or something, Ugh, or, until what? they refine it into their bio bomb. I don't know. It, that bit, that side is never explained. But yeah, the, the the creatures that seem to be left on this bit of Halo seem to be attracted to technology. Which um, makes absolutely no sense because A, they're sitting on a giant fucking line of technology that up until very recently was full of all kinds of electronics, presumably. Well, yeah, but there's no reason why those things couldn't have then come to it somehow. Because they then go on to say, right, these things are a form of the worm that hunters are made of. Okay. Um, they squeeze one and it bleeds But they live on the hate. Like, oh, that's me. That, that then, was the weird thing about the first Halo, anyway, or all the Halos we've seen in the series, is they cut out the feature where they had fauna, right? They they were originally what? in the original videos for Halo. There were like ne- there were like indigenous animals, yeah. um, and they got rid of that. They just had oh plants. yeah, yeah, they did. But it just make it makes more sense for the Halo storyline because you wouldn't want anything that could possibly be a flood host. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I think mean, I think the only time they did that was in. Reached, isn't it? Because they had the the is it the goers or the yeah, mower mowers, mowers. Yeah, but they're not on a halo, so that's okay. No, they're, they're not. Yeah. And then the other reason it's obviously dumb these worms 
is they're right in the fucking vicinity of a giant star. And if that doesn't create some kind of magnetic radiation field for a giant chunk of metal... Maybe that's why they went there. I don't know. Maybe they liked it. Well, so you... They can... So... I don't know how they went there. But... Well, then you just assume they can go through space. Yeah. But then if, if they did go there because they like the magnetic field of the star interacting with this giant chunk of metal, they must have to be pretty fucking sensitive to detect a tiny bit more magnetic well, field. Well, yeah, it's, it's been hinted thus far that this isn't normal for hunter worms. But, you know. But that's pretty much all it goes. That's as far as it's got. That's pretty dumb. It's pretty dumb. Sounds like nonsense to me. It, yeah, it's it's a shame because actually, the, as I say, the production value is really good. The attention to detail and making the world feel like Halo, like, you know, all the equipment they're carrying is accurate, like all the the Oni armor looks believable, that kind of stuff. And the way they talk about the relationships between the various organizations, yeah, it all fits. It all fits. Um, but, you know, the Condor dropship is nice. They had a Covenant dropship at one point. The animation on the uh, the one Elite you've seen, or Sang Haley you've seen so far is pretty bad. I'll give it... <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. But it, it just seems a shame that no one thought to actually write a decent story, which is actually kind of... Shouldn't be that hard in the Halo universe. I don't know. You'd think so. It's, it's not like it's even acted happened. badly. Like, everyone seems fine. Like... It's it's well made. It's what? just it's, the script is garbage. It's like, what could you have put on a chunk of Halo that's next to a star that you need to get? <laughs> the question. Well, it could have been about stopping the Covenant. Think perhaps there's a remnant of the Flood or something, and they're trying to get it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but the trouble with the Flood is it's equally dangerous to everyone. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be like your fanatics or something. They could they could have gone back to the Covenant fanatics or something. Mm. Maybe. Or the weird religious, uh, other religious elements of the covenant that aren't necessarily part of the covenant as we know it. I guess. Got that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they called. I don't don't know what they called that faction in Halo. The heretics. Too, I can't remember. The heretics. heretics? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, I quite like to that. see the newly redone heretics visuals in in the. Master Chief yeah, because they had, they had different armor and stuff, didn't they? Yeah, they could look kind of cool in Halo 2, I seem to remember, mm. so probably look a lot better now. Better. More better. Better has a T in it, I don't know why I say better. More better. Better. Because you've you from Ipswich Town, like, where we don't, <laughs> no, we don't I know. pronounce our T's. Oh. Don't really matter. No, I don't matter. I can drive oh. a tratter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tratter. not pronounce the T in tratter. Tratter. Rah! <laughs> 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 Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you don't press the, it's not the, the yeah, starting T's are fine. It's like that atta sound or T's in the middle of words aren't pronounced, are they? Or that's the thing. Mm. Tra, nah. Computer. Better. Yeah, computer. That was the best one, computer. Computer. <laughs> that still has a fair bit of a T in there. It's kind of a glottal <laughs> stop, isn't it? You say computer. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. what else have you been playing, I guess? Yeah, what you've been I, playing? I guess like, let's stay Halo, because like, uh, I, I don't think I talked about the breakout mode last time we talked about Halo 5. Mm. Not Maybe. that I recall. It was the last game mode I tried out of the three that they, they had. They had In the end, they had Slayer Strongholds, and which is a bit like um, uh, like Capture the Point, I guess, a little bit battlefieldy, but you know, small scale. Right. You score points if you have two of three. It was in... The giant bomb quick look that it, it, to help Dan out there. If it, like, yeah, watch that. Two, you have to, have to capture two of the three points to be scoring for your team. Um, blah, 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 blah. That's all we're right. Not, not a big fan, but it's okay. But the, the style of the show is Breakout, which basically is a, um, a 4v4 last man standing mode, except they, they go all out in making it feel like a sport event or... Some kind of craziness. Like there's, there's like much more announcement stuff going on. Like the announcer man is just talking to you all the time, and it's awesome because it's like if someone dies, it would suddenly announce like what the current player balance is, like four v three, stuff like that. So every time someone dies, you get a little update on what the situation is. Two on two, last man standing, duel. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's really cool, and it's like I don't know. I, I like the way it's presented. Like at the end of the rounds, I tell you, read out the score. It's like red team leads four to one. Like it's just that attention to detail on that is great. But it is basically just a last man standing style game, like forcing teamwork and stuff. But it it just works really well. 
Cool. Um, yeah. The levels the levels they played were symmetrical, so both sides. You know, they might be. Uh, they were at least front back symmetrical. They might not be left right symmetrical, but mm. you see what I mean. Like rotationally symmetrical, I guess they could be. But um, but so it was always a, it was always a fair match, despite the well, they did still do the classic problem and that the level is mostly blue. <laughs> so you know, it, you can't see the blue hard, players. Slightly yeah, harder to pick out the blue guys than it is the red guys. Um, I, I don't know why they keep making that mistake. <laughs> it's just it's just a bit awkward. I know they're stuck with red versus blue because it's their thing, but man, that would be better if it was green versus red or something. Just from a... <laughs> or just for some reason not have blue in your level design. Yeah, like, just why, make, is why not make it out of green or some some or white even? I don't know, some sort of neutral color. Uh, it would have been fine because it's all sort of done in a virtual like paintball arena. These modes. That's that kind of blue. Yeah. Um, you got the kind of free reign to choose the colours you want in that kind of situation. Yeah, right? they, they could have done what they wanted, but they didn't. They went blue and orange. But... It's because everything's freaking blue and orange. Yeah. Well, it's because all the other holograms in the Halo universe are blue. They're blue, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. But it's a really good fun mode. The sort of, like the, as I say, the just the presence of how things are announced and um, the precision of Halo combat without any of the bullshit... Um, Sort of like I don't know, you're not quite sure where your bullets are going to spray, kind of stuff. Halo is a much more precise shooter. Um, it just works really good. You don't if you lose, you lose because you sucked, not because your bullet spray just happened to go in the wrong direction. I'm looking at you, fucking Counter Strike. Well, I guess it depends what gun you're using. If you're using an SMG, is <laughs> well, yeah, sure, S- SMG at range. Yeah, you're not going to do it right. But the spray is like it, you know, it's it's containable if you're using it at the correct range that the gun's for. You know, you can expect fairly consistent results, and it's. It, it just feels really good. So Halo Five, looking forward to it. Breakout is a cool mode. Uh, so yeah, I might as well talk about Counter Strike. I really liked all the, but sorry, but, no, no, uh, no, all sorry, the no. um, team shout out stuff, the yeah, automatic it's awesome. stuff. That's really really, really good. good. I don't know why I mean, it's, done that before because that's genius. It's, it's it's cool because it you know when you're playing games like Counter Strike, for instance, it's hard to know necessarily what the what everyone calls the certain zones of the map. There's yeah. a tiny little indicator in the top left of the HUD that will read you what the area you're standing in, um, like what the official name of that area is. And so, you know, mm. in theory, everyone should use the same terminology to describe the map. But you're not really looking up there ever when you're playing that. Um, so you're relying on just learning it from the other players that are talking. <laughs> That's not um, really a problem, is it? I, it it's... Not as easy as when the game is constantly shouting that stuff at you. Yeah, but that would you work for back locations, wouldn't it? You wouldn't be running through a CS map and have it, have it as you're running along, have an announcer go, top, back of A, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> A bomb no, We're not talking about the announcer stuff. It's like the Spartans <laughs> in the game, if they see something, they automatically, even though they're human controlled, they automatically call out, hey, I spotted two guys yeah, in the that house. Yeah, that still would solve the CS really problem for telling you the location. You would be like, I'm in the back of A now. <laughs> Well, they don't do they, they don't do that. They tell you when they, they do it in a smart enough way, like they're reacting to enemy movement in that way. They don't just say, "Hey, I'm, I'm covering the back" or something. They'll say, "Oh, this particular point is now being captured," uh, or "There's t- I see two guys in the house," or "Grenade coming from here." Well, or, okay, but so in the CS version, you that would sort of make sense for them to say where they've seen the enemy, but in CS that wouldn't actually help because you're. The only people who would hear that would be right next to you anyway. <laughs> it's not like it's transmitted. It's just flavor. It's not actually assistance. I guess, but it's it would be an I, it helps. It would help. Doesn't the, I don't I think that it, the, the, the argument that it wouldn't help it isn't an argument because it just would. You just the one situation it would help with is walking around a corner and dying because you didn't know enemies were there. Because then assuming that one of your teammates has already seen around the corner that there's enemies, then you'd know not to walk the fuck out there. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. They, your, your guys will shout that out as well in Halo 5. They will say, like, oh, enemy got a multi-kill up ahead or something like that. It's <laughs> a bit weird. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the, fra- crazy, yeah. the phrasing they use is quite... I think it's because it's like a, all of these things are being positioned as a training exercise for Spartans. Again. Well, yeah. So, like, the, the, the language they use isn't very... is like a game. 
and it kind of worked like they refer to grenades as nades, for instance, and they don't. I don't know if that's a game thing. I think you would eventually shorten it. I guess that whole word. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, but the nades is a very Halo thing of describing it, and like they don't call, they don't say weapon names in full either. They just refer to snipe up ahead or something. Um, and do they call out en- when, en- when, enemy when got they snipe. respawn or something, or was that the announcer? I uh, can't remember. Uh, well, when the, the weapon the, spawns the, happen. You get a sort of generic um, uh, radio transmission, like just some guy basically not one of the spartans but like like weapon drop in 30 seconds or rocket launcher will appear in 30 but then the spartans will call out if they think an enemy picked up the rocket launcher it's like enemy picked up the rocket launcher that's kind of stuff like that i like that stuff i think it's quite it's 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 great it really adds to the atmosphere of the game and it's super helpful as well It's, it's it's the best example i've seen of anyone doing that and I quite like their implementation of the the look down sights thing, actually. Into yeah, because it doesn't actually way. improve your accuracy, um, or actually decrease your movement speed. It's just a zoom. That's all it is. Okay. It's not actually a like a COD style. You need to be doing this to get better at it. It's just a choice. If you want to shoot from the hip, there's no disadvantage to doing so. Which is great because of the Halo system of if you get hit while you're looking down the sights, you flinch and you come out of the sights. That's still a thing. Mm. Well, that makes looking down the sights a disadvantage, though. Well, kind of. You might flinch out, but you can, but you'll have a better chance of getting your aim right at range. Yeah, but it's not increasing your accuracy, so you're not actually benefiting from being able to zoom in. Really, it just becomes easier to see, and like, <laughs> well, you know, it does decrease your look speed a little, but not your actual movement speed. Mm. If you see what I mean. It's yeah. like so, you know, it, you you are gaining an accuracy assist, I suppose, by looking down the sights. Um, in the same way that it always was, that when you look down the sniper rifles like scope, although this is probably the dumb part of it, when you look down the sniper rifle scope, you're still walking left and right at normal speed while you're doing that. Yeah, it's kind of like every every weapon having the pistol scope from from yeah, kind of Halo. Although the although the scoping is weapon specific, like yeah, you know, if you use a Use a battle rifle, for instance, you get a little bit more zoom than if you would say the pistol zoom isn't very much, for instance, because there's no, no scope attached like to it. Times, yeah. and yeah. It's, well, it's not like, it's, I'm not sure it's even that. It's only subtle. It's like a right, little okay. um, look in. And the assault rifle, for instance, is only a little zoom in. And uh, I, I, I just think it's, I think it's great. It's really cool. They've taken the good bits from a lot of games as well, you know, like mobility wise. Like you know, you can still boost left and right, but you can only do it do it once uh, within a certain time frame. Um, you know, the ground power move is fun if you can pull it off, and even the sort of hover in the air jetpack stuff can throw people if you time it at the right moment when they're not expecting it. Or yeah, it's they're all clever. They're all clever, but at the same time, they don't overcomplicate it with like, oh, you need to be wall running the entire time or. Uh, some of the extra stuff from Titanfall, but they, which kind of mm. makes it feel unique. It's like, they're, they're, yes, it's obvious that they're borrowing, but they borrow the right bits in the right way. Which is fine. Yeah, I also, think it was pretty cool. Also, clamber. <laughs> just, just because they wanted to say the word clamber. I still feel like I'm kind of done with Halo single player. I hear 4 was good. What are you talking about? I don't know. I watched you play it, and it didn't didn't make me want to play it. Halo Four. Good. It looked good, <laughs> mm. but I don't know about the actual. I mean, it plays. It played like Halo. There's nothing really. A... I don't know. I didn't like it as much. I think the new enemies were bad. <laughs> that was my main problem. I, I agree. They're not as good as the Covenant, but I don't think they were bad. They were more interesting to fight than the feckin' Flood. Well, sort of, but the the problem, the main reason why the flood were interesting at all was because there was tons of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess the horde of them. You know, there were certain enemies later on that sort of like would crawl the walls. But yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that difference disappeared, and that they were just a sort of different covenant, I guess, in a way. We'll see. We'll probably end up with more of that, I guess, in five and six potentially. But hmm. but we'll see. Uh, they seem to be moving in good directions and perhaps the shake up of the if if what we think is true and that what the mechanics of the multiplayer are like is going to be how the single player handles then maybe that's enough to shake it up 
That's true. Because everything else is going to have to adjust to make it work, right? Like the AI can't do exactly what it did before. It's going to have to behave faster itself or act sure. in a different way to deal with the new speed. Cool. That's Halo. Halo. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be good. What else have you been playing? Playing a lot of Counter Strike still. I don't fucking know why. <laughs> it's like, I, I still stand by what I said last time, and I think their implementation of the competitive mode is slick, and it's really well made. Um, but it's still Counter-Strike, and I, that shooting model is bullshit. And it always has been. <laughs> like, guns just spray too much if you're moving, for instance. Like, so you can't. You always have to be stationary if you want to get an accurate shot. But even when you're stationary, there's a lot of spray. So there's no guarantee that your first shot is going to go anywhere fucking near where you want it to. And it's like, so like head, it just feels like a crapshoot. And like, I, there are ways of getting better at it, but it's not intuitive. Mm. And I think more games have done it better since. But it is unique in its, in its, in that, I suppose, and still, it still feels good playing Dust Two, for instance. For some reason, yeah, it's a cool map. I don't know, it's a it's well, it's it, it works really well for that, and I have more fun on that map than I do any of the others. Um, I always thought Dust was okay with the dip and everything. Yeah, I haven't actually played a game on Dust One yet. I'm not sure, I'm not not 100 percent sure it's still there, but oh, it's definitely it must be. It must be. But yeah, Dust Two is cool. Is a cool level. Inferno is still weird. Nuke is still terrible. Italy? Mm, I didn't really like Italy. Uh, was it Italy? Oh yeah, I sort of remember it. Italy was okay. I remember that. But yeah, I, no, I, I think I just want to sort of get ranked, and it is an excuse to sort of actually like to play something with kippers <laughs> um, that isn't Call of Duty, which is nice. It might as well be Call of Duty. Uh, kinda <laughs> same level of bullshit, I suppose. Same so level of Kipper's rage. Yeah, I don't think it like it. I don't think it match makes particularly well if you're unranked. It seems right because we went. Well, I was playing the other night with some other people from Rick's Twitch channel. Yeah, so there was five of us there. Rick, who's ranked, and uh, someone else who was ranked pretty well. But then three of us unranked. So then we ended up just getting ranked against really good people, and the three of us were like, "Well, but we don't." Like, this isn't fair. We all suck. We can't, it, like, figure out, like, because we're unranked, that we need to sort of, like, to move around the... Don't always rank us against good people, please. <laughs> so it's, it's a little uncertain to see. Maybe because you have ranked persons in your group or something, it just uses them rather than caring about the unranked people. But that that doesn't seem right to me. But, but it works well enough. Well, surely the whole load. Well, it's... They should have separated it more like how StarCraft does or something. Like the games with unranked people should be a specific thing. It should be the ranking matches where you're. But you need to play going... 10 games in order yeah, to. That's what I'm saying. Ranked. Those 10 games should be in a special pool where it's like randomized teams because it's working out who's good and who's not. That's the whole point of ranking. But then surely it doesn't know what. Though any of the ranks of those unranked people are, therefore it's got nothing to compare against. That's why I said it needs to put it needs to put the unranked people in with ranked people no, in order to have a have a concept of yeah. like, like how good that unranked player did against something of a fixed level. Yeah, but it should. That's why I'm saying it shouldn't pick the same rank of people. Even oh, the yeah, ranked no, no. people should be should be randomised as well. It's like if you've got a team which has like one ranked dude and, five, and four unranked then that guy's rank shouldn't actually matter. It should just pair, put them up against random teams of other people with sometimes ranked and sometimes unranked. In fact, really what it should do is just scramble the teams unless you're playing in an unranked playlist, basically. <laughs> or a, or a ranked but not scoring. So it match makes to the right level, but it doesn't matter to your rank if you've got unranked people in your team. Yeah, but you, casual mode doesn't have any of this. So it's, <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It should be more like StarCraft. Actually, to have a ladder. But that's how it works normally. Like once you get ranked, yeah. Once you get ranked, rank, once the... you get ranked, it starts ranking you against people of similar skill level, and then you can go up and you put your work your way up. That's what I mean. It's... it's like the fact that unranked people. But you have no level at that point. How does it know? 
That's what, that's what I just said. It's meant to be random when you're unranked because you're meant to. It's meant to determine your rank by comparing you to the uh, other. That's what I mean. People. I think it is unless you have people who are ranked in your group, and then it's users. Then yeah, so that's what it should do. It should just always if you're if you've got an unranked person in your team, it should just assume that everyone. It should unranked. just yeah. I'm with you. It should just go into unranked mode and treat it like that. Yeah, but it doesn't, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Which makes it a bit of a trial by fire for me because it's like I bring the whole team down because I'm always getting ranked against people at Kipper's level. It? <laughs> does that rank system even does it work on like a ladder or is it still ELO? Uh, I don't. I think it's ELO ish. Yeah, <laughs> but then StarCraft is kind of like that, isn't it? You get a skill rating and yeah, but only to initially really because then you're still in those groups and you go up and down within the group. To a certain extent, and then you move. Uh, yeah, I think it, all that stuff is kind of hidden from well, you. Like, kind of, but not, as, like, not like, as much as it is in, <laughs> in Counter Strike, right? where it's always completely hidden. Well, it's like the old Halo 2 system where you basically get a, get like a level, but where you are within that level is not made, not exposed to you. Yeah. So you don't know when you're about to rank up or rank down, for instance. I mean, obviously, it's easier in StarCraft where there's only one person that you have to worry about. <laughs> you have to worry about unranked people in your group. Mm, no. Well, Although, so. then again, in StarCraft, you have like. You have ranks for two on two matches and three on three matches or whatever, mm. and that's separate to your one v one rank. <laughs> mm. I guess they uh, Halo Five exposes where you are in your tier, like it's like not again in terms of raw numbers, but how far up and down between the rank boundaries you are, or it thinks you are right now. So it's like if you're about to go from bronze to silver, you can see mm. you're close to doing that. Um, I don't know. I don't think there is a good answer. It's like either route has its pro any solution has its problems. But but yes, you're right. If you're unranked, always rank always match make against randoms so it can figure out how to rank you better. Or just that's the whole point. Or just play ten matches with fully unranked teams. I guess, but surely you then get get to a point where it um can't do that anymore. And if you're playing with ranked people, then that's not fair. I mean, you say you can't do that anymore, but I think there's probably always going to manage to be five unranked people in the entire world. <laughs> Or well, ten, I guess, if you're talking about two teams. I guess maybe. But it's like <laughs> I don't know. And, but then you can't like as a, that, that's the whole problem. Then if you're playing unranked against unranked, how do you determine the skill level? You can't. There's no there's no number to work with from. That's only if you're working off a pure ELO. There's probably another way you could just calculate it or estimate it by like some combination of kills and accuracy and a bunch of other stats. Well, maybe, but if it gets it wrong, then that would suck real bad. But only initially, because then your rank would modify as you, no, work, depends as how you quick, start playing. It depends how quick rank changes. Well, yeah. If it changes as fast as it does in Halo 5, that took a really long time. <laughs> he's skanking. He's top ranking. Yeah, he is. He's I just look up. at your uh, your status on Steam, you know, on the chat. So, it, yeah. you know, you, normally it says, like, Glacial is online. Glacial, uh, no, it says Glacial is now online or Glacial is now away. What it says now is, Glacial is now snooze. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am now snooze. <laughs> <laughs> I am now snooze. <laughs> hey, thanks, bye. I am now snooze. Uh, where else have I been playing? I finished Sunset yeah. Overdrive. Oh, yeah? Uh, the main story stuff. What's the uh, ending of that like? I think the story peters out a bit towards its final faction and stuff. I think the final faction, the final area of the city, the final area of the city downtown is just kind of awkward to to get around. Um, Even once you've not, got all the skills and traversals. Yeah, there. it's just not as fun an area. It's more vertical uh, than the other areas, which means you have to worry about routes of getting up and stuff on occasion and not falling down so far that you then have to find another route up. It's just it, it is a more difficult area, and maybe that's the the point, you know, putting it at the end of the game, but it isn't as fun as a result. Um, which is a bit of a shame. And the, uh, I don't know, I think, as I say, I think the writing and the, and the story sort of just basically starts to take a bit of a back seat. It feels like they're not really trying, and they're just like, it's like side mission quality stuff towards the end of the game. And then just out of the blue, you suddenly go, well, okay, now we're going to actually end this. And then you get a mission that just ends everything. <laughs> Like, there's no real build up to the end, particularly. It's just like, no, nope, mm, now we're gonna, okay. now we're gonna end it. That's it. Yeah. Back up and go home. And in fairness, some of the writing in that last mission is pretty great, but it's just like that whole build up to the end. It kind of 
doesn't feel as strong as, say, the beginning to mid section. Um, or mm. the LARPers. The LARPers are cool. <laughs> LARPers is a byword for cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, but they, but the, yeah, the way that they're done in the game is pretty fun. It is cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I really like it. I'm still playing a lot of it. Like just going into the world, still just dicking about, um, trying to level up all my weapons, um, uh, collecting all the remaining collectibles, and which there are still a ton of. I think I've got like two thirds of them. Um, so I can then buy bigger and better amps. Blah blah blah. blah. Which then leads, I suppose, that's the next problem. There actually isn't a very large variety in the amps, um, which is a bit disappointing because they're supposed to be like one of the game's biggest parts, right? That you know you can get these things that make everything crazy, and it's like, but actually, you have a very limited selection of them, mm. you, and like you qu- very quickly find the ones that are most effective to the way you play, and it's and then you stick to them, um, which is a bit of a that's a bit disappointing. Like it looks like they have tons of menu space for filling out loads of them, but then they don't really use them. So the most egregious one is the hero amps, which um, I, I have. You, you get two slots for these, but there's only like five available. <laughs> like, okay. It's like so. What, what do I pick? I, I, and then and they're not that useful, like those ones. Um, so I, one of them I just waste on changing to be the announcer voice. You could just replace one of your amps with having an, an announcer that will occasionally shout out crazy stuff when you kill things. So you ended up using that instead? Yeah, because actual... it's, it's more entertaining. <laughs> okay. It's somewhat depressing that the announcer guy is... You know, it's better than having a power. <laughs> it's better than gameplay, altering stuff. It, yeah. It's so, so the amps come across as a little, perhaps, undercooked. Um and the same is perhaps true of the weapon variety as well, because some of the ones you end up getting sort of later on in the game are just guns, yeah. rather than all the crazy stuff. Like you know, there's no you, you, the game front loads actually some of the more interesting weapons, and then like the ones towards the end of the game just aren't as interesting, um, which is a bit of a shame again. Um, but I'm having a, I still I had a lot of fun with it. It's, it's it's a great game. It's one of those games, right? Where I if I when I sat back and actually started appreciating it. Rather than just playing it, it's there's a fuck ton of work has gone into this. Like, I mean, quite a lot. If you sit back and just sort of examine the world in which you're doing it, the the, the sheer volume of art that's about, mm. like, it's not just the design of the city and the design of the buildings and stuff. They plaster that place with graffiti and like cool designs and uh, things that make that world feel cohesive in their sort of like punk apocalypse, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's. And it's it's really good when you start looking at all that stuff and just sort of it's stuff that would just pass you by if you like, like most of the time during the game it would just be there. If like I, I sort of went made a made a point of going to look at like things that looked interesting, like a bit of graffiti I hadn't seen before. Let's go. Oh, let's go have a look at this. Oh, well, there's a dog strapped to the back of that dog. <laughs> Wait, I mean a rocket strapped to the back of that dog. <laughs> <laughs> there's a dog on top of that other dog. <laughs> yes, <laughs> some reason. that would be entertaining. <laughs> As, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's an impressive game from a sort of from a, a visual art standpoint. Mm. Uh, I really like it. So the only other thing I really I need to I suppose add is that I I, I tried the multiplayer stuff a bit. Oh really? Um, which it falls a little flat, I have to say. It's not. It's it. So the idea behind it is is that it's like an eight player, semi competitive, semi cooperative. Uh, experience where they think, well, if there's eight players, then we can make it eight times as crazy, right? We can have eight times the stuff going on. Um, and that's kind of how it works. So, like, they, you go through a phase at the start of the game where you play, like, um, a number of missions that you can sort of vote between which ones. But each, if you succeed in those missions, you get some uh, perks towards the final uh, horde mode phase, mm. uh, effectively. So you're doing these little tasks. Like some of them are some of them are sort of competitive. Where you're trying to beat the other players to do them. Like oh, go grab the supply crates before anyone else and take them to here using all the traversal mechanics. But like there's some, you can steal them off people in uh, points and things like that. Or hey, you need to be like killing more enemies than the others here. Or here, you need to be working together to take down this particularly strong enemy, and you'll all get a bonus if you take it down fast enough. Um, stuff like that, and it's fine because a lot of those missions are actually kind of 
variants or you know or at least different from things you have been doing in the single player like you wouldn't come across a giant regenerating enemy for instance in the single player um right that forces everyone to focus their effort on it to take it down stuff like that um so the the, the way i see that people play is they pick the the missions that build up the most chaos because like the chaos stat means there's going to be more going on during the final horde mode which is basically one of the night defenses in the game but with eight players and all kinds of shit going off mm. and it's a uh, and, and those are those are also just okay i guess there's a lot going on and there's a lot of ability that you could just sit back and do nothing and let your teammates take care of it you know that kind of stuff so it's a it's a little hard to know exactly what you're contributing because there's just so much going on. Um, a little too hectic. Yeah. But there are reasons to do that. Like there are achievements tied to surviving the, the night defense with a certain level of chaos, for instance. So it's the stuff you have to try and gun for. But you also get stuff, depending on how well you performed personally during the whole thing, you get like extra perks given to you at the end. Like, oh, you might unlock some, some new... Uh, clothing items that you could probably only get through playing multiplayer, I would guess. Right. Or uh, you get like a temporary boost for your gun, so your gun will be more powerful for a while, or you'll get more currency to just spend during the single player game, that kind of stuff. Um, so there are there are benefits to doing it, but it, it and it's okay. I just don't think it's particularly great, and I'm not sure it will hold your attention for very long. Mm. Uh, it's all right. It's amazing how much effort goes into these multiplayer modes that end up just being all right, there. and then yeah. and then people play for five minutes and go back to Call of Duty. Yeah, it's like, it's I mean, like it, it feels a little unpolished. You have to make one. I mean, it feels a little unpolished in places. Like when a mission starts, for instance, the instructions for the mission are just given in the form of a slideshow of pictures, right. rather than it would be great if they got the announcer man to announce the events, for instance, to say. Kill that regenerating hacker! You need to work together and you'll get this bonus, blah, 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 blah. And that would just, that on itself would have just made the whole presentation of that mode much better. Mm. Like, that was all you would have needed. Like, just get an announcer guy in. Um, or at, least, at least from a presentation standpoint, you know, the gameplay would have still been the same, but, you know. I think it just works better as a single player experience. Like, right. it's just a little, little too crazy in multiplayer. But I guess the upshot of all of this is is like I really hope they revisit it. I hope this isn't the end of Sunset Overdrive and then it's not a one off. And in modern day gaming, that's probably a dead set, you know. <laughs> it will come back. Yeah, it's quite likely it'll um, be back. They keep, make, Microsoft keep even mentioned it during their um little press conference thing. Okay, like sure. When they were talking about the streaming thing, they were like, Oh, I'm playing Sunset Overdrive. So mate, they obviously think of it as a key franchise, I suppose, now. Well, yeah. Because they got Microsoft. nothing else going on, on the Xbox One. It was Microsoft published, wasn't it? As, yeah. As well. like, so it's, of course they would. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it, there's a lot there that I think they could refine. Um, and the second game will probably nail the formula, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. But given how much I'm enjoying it right now. Uh yeah, the, 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 it can only get better. It's like really, I like it, I like it a lot. Sweet. And I've even got more used, to, more appreciative of the soundtrack as well. That I thought was a bit like, oh, it's just in the background. But it's like the more I've actually, st- again, because I'm in this sort of like, oh, I've, I've played through the game now. Now I can appreciate it. I don't know. There's like now there's, yeah, I actually think the music's pretty good as well. <laughs> So it's oh, all right, you've come around to it. A bit more. Yeah, it's all, it's all very punk, but it's quite, I quite like it. Like The more I've listened to it, the more I actually sort of think it's, a, it's quite well done. And a lot of it is unique to the game, like made for the game as well. Mm. Um, and it's cool. It's cool. Recommend. Get my two thumbs up. Two thumbs fresh. Oh, playing with a female voice isn't as good. I decided. I tried it. It's like no, no, no. It's good. Okay, is that your most of your games or? Yeah, I don't think I've done much else. Cool. Really, I think we're coming um, to the end here. Somewhat. Yeah, but apart from you both played Transistor, so you should probably talk about it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, okay. I started recursing Transistor. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't re- I'm not really sure. I've got a lot to add to it. Um, to what I said before, but it's. Uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm surprised I'm still playing it a little bit, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't think I've got much uh, much to add. I like it. I'm still playing it the first time around because I'm slow. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I think I have similar issues as you, Rob, with uh, probably with the some of the frustration of of the um, you know, I I like I sort of liked your idea of. I don't think it would actually work, but I quite I, I I share your desire for having like a second pause so you know what the hell went wrong with the plan and why it didn't yeah. come off the way it said it would. Um, might be quite good, but uh, yeah, I, I suppose you get used to it. But it is a bit like like as you go through, the more the more the plan fails, basically. <laughs> um, sort of, yeah. And you have to like plan for the plan failing. And say no, it's not actually going to do that damage because it's going to teleport away or whatever it's going to do. Yeah, uh, what it, what it's telling you is wrong, yeah, or yeah, like try and even sometimes the way certain enemies drift after you certain yeah powers, they move slightly it and, and it then you just take that and, it's, and that's fine. And the, the fact that it's fine that it does, doesn't predict it, but it's then uh, I don't know. Sometimes you, I can get screwed over by the um, if you target enemies so they go yellow, for instance, like in mm. the, and the way it then tracks them. Like sometimes the one that it tracks is not the one you expect it to track. Mm. Like it won't it won't fire in the direction that you like specified because because it because it goes through an enemy and they've gone yellow. It will they'll aim at where that enemy is now gone to. And sometimes that's handy, but sometimes of course that's the complete opposite of what you want it to do. And it's like no 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 don't do oh yeah and then <laughs> the it's done. Between ground targeting and typing the enemy directly. Yeah, it's like they don't really explain that. Is one of the problems. Right, like, and maybe the fact that's that if it. you put your cursor directly on an enemy, it's essentially attaching your targeting to it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it changes color, right? Yeah, when you're well, kind of because it changes color if they're going to get hit, which also happens with error of effect. Sure, but if you actually put the cursor on them, that's slightly different. Uh, yeah, but right. there's no real visual indication. Yeah, there's no that. actual. No, uh, okay. doesn't tell you that. Maybe that's what it's lacking a little bit. But yeah, I like it. I, um, I, 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 I've been changing my strategy a little, but I think I've ended up like landing on something that's pretty close to how Zach was describing. Well, you don't have the vortex. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Well, I no, I don't have the vortex. I have used the vortex, but like or pulling on voids or something. Like that, or, but get on void. Get on jaunt. <laughs> get on jaunt. <laughs> well, no, I just like leaving copies behind me, like distract everyone. Yeah, but you also have spark on jaunt, and when is that ever useful? <laughs> it, it isn't anymore. Uh, I have to. I, I admit, I have to swap that a little bit. It, like I don't know, sparked, uh, sparked help. A, a, a jaunt with spark and help is kind of cool because you create so many copies behind you when you do when you jaunt around. So there's like maximum distraction bonus. Don't need a distraction if all the enemies are gravitationally pulled into a big lump because <laughs> then they can't escape. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have as much luck with that. I didn't think that was quite as effective. Um, yeah, maybe I don't need spark on my jaunts anymore. Like, just having a copy should be enough. Do you ever need a spark on my It does so little well, no, damage. Those, well, no, like, the, individual the, bits of No, spark. sure, yeah, I didn't use it for, like, attacking enemies. I used it because it was a way, like, if you had the limiter on that gave cells shields, oh, right. I used it to get rid of the shields. Yeah. Um, so I could pick them up. Um, but now that now in my new form, I actually just have a jaunted because you can have your no, because I've got two, two jaunts. jaunts, yeah. I, I got a jaunted ping so I can just shoot them to take the shields off. Sweet, it, it's it's cool that how much you can experiment with that with those functions. Yeah. It's that, that is cool, definitely adds to things. There's a, there's a surprising amount of. Um, longevity in just having 20 attacks, I guess. Wait, how about you go through the challenges? That's the important one. Oh, yeah, I'm still doing all those, yeah. I've, I've got a, a, well, like one more agency and I think one more speed test, I think, left. Oh, no, yeah. I've done all the speeds. The only one, I think there's one performance, that's it. There's another performance test to do. Yeah, obviously the only one that matters is the one that actually limits your powers and then gives them back to you gradually because yeah, that's the, that's the one that's where the you actually have test. to yeah. be interested in what you're making yeah although I, I normally cheese those like the one that has nothing but man waves like I pretty much just cheesed it like just like um, uh, ping off the, the haircuts whenever they appear and then um, have my throat close up and make ah <laughs> <coughs> uh, yeah 
So uh, and then just like very, it was an incredibly slow game basically because I ended up overloading a couple of times halfway through it, and it's like, oh, oh, yeah, what do I do here? So it's like, and then not really strong attack powers, and it's like <laughs> very slowly whittle them down. And it's like so every time I got to like a new round, it's like, what can I use this? Why well, I don't care. Just put them in an attack slot. I need options. <laughs> we'll call that cheesy. Yeah. But it was a little bit because you know the man's the, the man's the man's they don't they don't really attack you like for well, a no, while. that's what like, haircuts are for. Yeah, it's like you can so you can sort of just hang back and then they don't really fire their haircuts. So it's like not well, that. That is so. the one bit of cheese that happened. That happened to me more in like the in the survival <coughs> ones, whatever those are called. I forgot what the word stability. they use. Yeah, stability. Because there's cases where where you can if you're just jaunting around occasionally the enemies have randomly shifted into a position where you've jaunted behind a bit of cover and none of them can see you so they just stand there oh yeah and then you can just stand there and let the tire run down yeah that's, really <laughs> that's how you cheese it that's really useful when that happens I, I'm not sure I like some of the forms of attack like I don't like the fact that creeps get the gravity beam for instance and I don't like it, it just becomes awkward it feels it feels frustrating to fight against some of those when they get leveled up yeah you're just trying never to get hit at that point. Yeah, sure. But when you do, and it's like, oh, love of, that's bad. Or like when you get, well, earlier, even when you saw them, you get kind of stuck against, against those dogs, and for some reason it's not letting you jaunt away. And it's like, that happens to me quite a lot. And it's like, God damn it, like, what, what am I doing wrong here? Why can't I move? Trying to jaunt too much for all. Oh, maybe, but then I but then that happens once, and you try a different direction, and you're still not moving. It's like, that's, the thing, that's the thing we said last time that you kind of get locked in a <coughs> direction at some point. Yeah, you're not, you're not actually inputting a new direction before you're pushing the button or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I think I find that bit of control frustrating. But but overall, it's a it's a very interesting thing. I'm not sure I'll go through all of it a second time. There we go. Transistor. Transistor. Hey, hey, gringo. Transistor. <laughs> You're not okay. Rob yet. You've got to go over there to be next to him, Rob. <laughs> got to leave. You've got to actually do that now, because apparently yeah, it's cool. the end of the podcast. Yeah. It's the end of the podcast. No one Thanks for listening, anymore, listeners. Uh, talked about the games I've played, and, and Zach, and Rob, and we've talked about news, and we've done quite a bit of bullshit, so that means it's the end. <laughs> <laughs> join us next time for uh, more bullshit more news more what you've been playing uh, stay tuned to the YouTube channel for um, a video of um, Infinity Factory right well remembered <laughs> sorry I was getting confused with Infinity Minor and Factory what's the other one Factorial Factorio yep Factorio yeah it's like a Italian mathematician anyway <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we'll be back with you in a couple of weeks. More. Great Factorio. There goes Mexican Rob. Bye.